one quick question. So I got, I'm, I'm, I'm trying out this new kind of more colored style at the moment as well. Mm. So I, I'd like to just ask you guys really what you prefer. So I got this, I worked up this gunslinger sketch for you guys. And as you can see, I'm extremely messy when I start out. But do you guys want this to be black and white ink? Or would you like to see a more colorful kind of more, I guess, you know, the, like the old Spawn animated series? Um, would you like to see that kind of more colorful? thing going on mm, i don't know you guys so, gotta uh, they'll let him know so like i mean it would look kind of like that yeah you gotta speak up and bull says color vibrant after saint patty's day yeah yeah how was your saint patrick's day by the way kevin it was it was good it was quiet you know um there was a big parade through my town but i was busy working on some pages so i just got to wish a couple of people a happy patty's day and that was that but do you guys I know you guys love it over in the States, right? <laughs> I uh, think some of us do more than others. That's for sure. Yeah, sure Everybody who loves to drink loves, loves that holiday. Yeah, yeah. Was it they dye the, the Hudson and the Chicago River, don't they? They dye it green. Uh, oh, yeah. That is, I'm pretty sure, yeah, that is a tradition. Yeah, over here, our water is just green, so I don't think anyone really cares. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like we got a unanimous vote for, uh, or not a unanimous, there's one vote for black and white, but everyone else was color, so. Okay, well, to the guy who does black and white, you've got like a thousand examples, so <laughs> we're just going to have some fun with color tonight, it looks like. Do it any yeah, better. go ahead and get crazy with it. Rock and roll. So, yeah, do it started. I'm sure you guys can see this, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, sweet. So I see you whipped up that sketch and it's looking great. What uh, When you're just starting out on a piece and it's a blank canvas, what's kind of going through your mind? Do you game plan it out in your head or do you just start drawing and see where it takes you? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it's game plan. Other times it's just feel it out, see what feels right. I mean, this particular sketch took about, I mean, I think this whole sketch took about maybe five minutes just to kind of figure five out. Minutes. Sometimes it, Wow. Well, sometimes it just falls into place. I mean, if I was to yeah. was just a quick example, like if I was to do, you know, with Gunslinger, it's just all about, it's all about cool body weight and pose. So like I would start by just doing some really quick gestural stuff. And if it feels right first up, then I'll just stick with that. So, you know, mm. I work, I do a thing called noodle drawing, which I learned from watching Greg Capullo. You may have heard of him. And noodle drawing is when you kind of, twist lines around in various planes so you get a feel for the body weight as well as the pose so if you were to do a cool like badass gunslinger walking forward you kind of just play with the body weight until it feels right and so with this particular sketch it was a case of once i got the lean on his back correct then it felt like the gunslinger and then i get started kind of Interesting. My, that's, my, awesome. that's my approach really but, you know, other times it doesn't work out so much. Like the, the reason I did this now instead of working out um, the sketch here and now is because sometimes it can take up to an hour. You just don't know sometimes. So I didn't want to waste it. <laughs> Luck of the draw, whatever your hand comes up with. Kind of. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> when you, when uh, you start off, do you normally start off on that canvas size, 11 by 17? Is that pretty standard? Um, well, it, it depends. Um, if it's for a big job, then you'll thumbnail it out. So you'll make like a small, tiny little image like this. And you'll kind of play around with the composition. Some, you see some guys, they'll do a grid and they'll kind of work out, you know, that's the title, that's the logo. And this is the pose of the character. You might do that sometimes. But for something like this, where it's a bit more easygoing and, and free form, I just kind of wing it and see if, you know, I just hope for the best. And sometimes if it sucks, I just rub it out and start again. Don't be shy, everyone. If, if you guys uh, feel free to unmute at any time and chat up, chat away. What um, what's your favorite part about the drawing process? Uh, for me, it's the point where it all comes together. For me, it's like the the moment when the shading goes in and it starts to really feel like it's got life and body weight to it. Um, everything up to that point is pretty much just graft to me. Um, working some stuff out, like seeing seeing a nice thumbnail come together, is is pretty sweet too. Um, but yeah, once the once the shadows start going on, like that's where I've always felt my art is at the strongest point when when 
you know, you see the body weight and you see the different elements of the costume start to come together. That's when it really starts to feel alive. Yeah. That's my favorite thing. Hey, Kevin, it's Frisky. What's happening, dude? Good to hear from you. How are you, my man? I'm very good, dude. I'm very good. Hey, uh, so um, with uh, all your covers that are coming out, you're doing a, a great job on that. Uh, you had Gunslinger 18 that just dropped, and and you have some other covers that are coming out featuring Spawn mm -hmm. and everything like that. And obviously, you're crushing this gunslinger as as we speak. Is there any characters that you haven't drawn yet that you would like an opportunity to do so? Um, do you mean within the Spawn universe, or do you yeah. mean in general? Yeah, within the Spawn universe. Um, for for a, a, he's not really in the comics as far as I know right now, but I, I've always really liked Jason Wynn. Um. You know, the big long windows and the foreboding kind of desk and stuff that he's got going. I've always found that stuff really cool. So Jason wouldn't be cool to draw. Um, Monolith, he's a more modern character. He came in pretty recently. Um, I really like Monolith. I'd like to give him a shot someday. Um, and off the top of my head... Yeah, Monolith and Jason Wynn come to mind. I like, I mean, Billy Kincaid would be kind of cool too. I like drawing those kind of really sinister dudes. Yeah, I could, I can definitely see you doing some Jason Wynn. If uh, I drop some of your panel uh, work in the Artist Alley chat, so I um, hope everybody in the audience gets to check out some of uh, our uh, Kevin's past work. But um, I'm definitely excited to see you do something like that. And and Monolith would be amazing. I think you would just crush yeah, that. He's a, he's a badass, yeah. Monolith's yeah. really cool. He's a pretty cool character that I that I, I'm glad that Todd has brought. You know, it's kind of the Hulk of uh of yeah. this universe. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see more of him and and uh yeah, to see you crush a monolith would be exciting to see, I'm sure. Well, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep that in mind. Um, should the opportunity arise itself, I'll definitely take it. <laughs> um, it's what, weird. What outside the Spawn universe? Which, sorry? Outside the Spawn universe? Yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, Jesus. Uh, Batman, <laughs> number one. 100%. Oh, um, I think you, you're Batman. Are you nuts? Yeah, I mean, Batman is my baby, like my bread and butter for what I, I, I base any approach or any any method that I try to develop with my art. I always test it on Batman first, because if it doesn't look good on Batman, then there's no point. Um, and then Daredevil, I'd love to draw Daredevil. Um, that'd just be a cool story. But I'd like to draw like peak Daredevil when he's with Bullseye and, and Kingpin. Um, and, you know, the likes of the symbiotes like Venom and Carnage, I think they'd be sweet to work with because they kind of fit within the style of heavy inks that I use. Hey, I got, I got a question for Kevin. Shoot. So when you're drawing, let's say for uh, Todd McFarlane in the image, is there freedom for you to create a character that you've had an idea for the, the, the Spawn universe, let's say? What's the freedom there? Well, to create a character, I mean, I've only really worked on a small portion of interiors on Gunslinger 1 and, and covers, so I don't really have that, I don't have that, I guess, freedom right now. Um, but when it comes to, like, for example, let's say costumes, um, so, you know, you can, you can vary Spawn or Gunslinger or Medieval's costume slightly, as long as it looks cool. Um and as long as it looks up to up to standard, then yeah, I mean, you can pretty much go nuts. Um, as for like, you know, image, everything is creator owned at image. So you kind of have complete free reign at image to do whatever the hell you want, just as long as it doesn't suck, you know. Um, but, so, so, so for instance, if you, if, if you, you know, you're working on Gunslinger and if you thought like you had an idea for a character and you want to introduce a character, What's the latitude that you're given to introduce that char character? Does that have to be okayed by yeah. Say, Todd? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hundred percent. If you're if you're creating a character, like I mean, it comes down to the creative team. I mean, Todd and Brett are the creative team right now. So 
they would discuss it between themselves and then they would have the final say so, you know. Um, so as an artist like yourself and, you know, mm-hmm. Images, Spawn's been around for uh, 30 years now. Isn't yeah. that something that you want to kind of like uh, go on with your legacy? Because you eventually, like, let's say 10 years or 15 years down the road, you may move on from Image. But wouldn't you want as an artist to create a character that's going to be there forever? I mean, oh, absolutely. Uh, as an artist? Oh, 100%. Yeah, you're completely right. I would love that. Um, I mean, as of as of maybe later this year, maybe closer to next year, I plan on putting the groundwork in for my own story where I plan on doing all the art and all the writing. Um, and obviously, you know, my time schedule is depending, you know, once I get the freedom to actually do so. But I, I've been developing my own work since, actually since the lockdowns in 2020. Um, I started developing my own story with a handful of characters that I think are badasses. So, um, I, I totally, I, I think you're spot on. I think you're, you're on the ball. It's true. I think for any artist, you do want to create legacy characters that stand the test of time and that people can connect with. You know, I mean, I've always admired the artists who've done it before me. I mean, Todd, of course, Frank Miller, uh, Mike Mignola, you know, they've all created iconic stories and characters that nobody can deny, you know, whether you like it or, or not is a different thing, but you can't deny Sin City, you can't deny... Um, Hellboy, you can't deny Spawn. You know, they've stood the test of time. They've got incredibly devoted fans. So I absolutely aspire to that. Yeah, totally. Is there any way you can introduce a character from from your from your world into Spawn? Is that something that it would and then you can just I mean that's branch, a, branch out on your own? That'd be a dream come true. But you'd have, again, because Todd owns Spawn, you'd have to talk to Todd. You know, yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'll call him. I'll talk to him. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. We'll, we'll just set up a Zoom and we'll talk. Hey, my last question, man. I don't mean to bother you. No, um, you're not bothering me at all, man. I'm here for. Is there is there any long. intentions for you to get into uh, the project that you're talking about? Is there any intentions of you getting into the Web three world of like w- what's happening now? Um, you know, I'm not particularly aware of it all as it happens because I just don't have the time. I mean. <laughs> When you're as committed to drawing like I am, I really just focus on drawing. Um, I'm trying to make sure these skulls don't suck. Um, but, you know, Web3 and everything that's going on like that, I'm not as invested in it as I would like to be because I don't have the time to investigate it properly. But I'm not one of these people that, you know, immediately pulls, a, pulls against something that I'm not immediately familiar with, you know. Um, if Web3 became something that was massively lucrative to people like me who create things. Sure, 100%. But it would have to become a value for my time in order for me to commit to something like that. Um, but you never know. I mean, 15, 15 years ago, nobody even considered Web3 as a possibility. And so here we are, you know. So, I mean, anything can happen. Well, um, I mean, 30 years ago, Todd started Image and everybody was telling him, like, what are you doing? You're crazy yeah. walking away from DC and, and, uh, and Marvel, right? And yeah. now he's, he's on the forefront. It seems like he's doing something crazy again, but let's fast forward another 30 years and you're like, oh, shit, he was onto something. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, generally speaking, innovators are always kind of um, rubbished by the mainstream because they see things differently. They view things differently. They approach things differently. I mean, to quote Todd himself, um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the Image Revolution documentary. Um, but there was a moment, I think it was at a panel, I don't know, was it at San Diego, but it was at a Comic-Con, and, and Todd made the comparison between an employee and an entrepreneur. And he made the, the comparison that <clears throat> the employee and the entrepreneur walk up to a, uh, they walk up to like a, a cliff. And on the other side of the cliff, there's this massive big drop but it's just a big black chasm at the bottom. You can't really see on the other side. And Todd described it as the employee goes, okay, well, if I jump, can I, can I come back? Like, if it goes bad, can I, can I approach it differently? Or, you know, do I have options? Whereas the entrepreneur takes three steps backwards and then jumps in heels first, you know? And that's, you know, something that I've been always very inspired by because I, I've always viewed drawing and comic books and all this stuff very differently to from what i can tell the main the mainstream so you know i would always be very open to growth 
and I'd always be open to new things. If, if it seems to me like something that could be wildly successful, then yeah, absolutely, I'll take it seriously. You know, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, it's great. I mean, so ha- as, a, as an odd key community, how do we go by supporting your project coming forward? I mean, right right now, it's 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 non-existent. So I guess when I when I do reveal it and when I do start to show it off to people, don't be mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't be mean, and and you know, just support it in whatever way I I can make it available. You know, that'd be the best way to say it for right now, if that makes sense. Um, but is Adki? What I'm saying is Adki. Like, basically, is Adki the venue for that for you? You know what I mean? Because I think that's what. Um, that's what Todd's intentions were, is to bring artists like yourselves the exposure that they need. Sure. I mean, listen, if, if, that's, if that's what it becomes and if that's the best course of action, then absolutely. And I'll present it to, to you know, this community and I'll, I'll show it and, you know, try and make it as digestible and as, you know, I guess, uh, what's the word? As appealing. As possible, you know, because I mean, I like to think that I know I have a good grasp on people's sensibilities for what they like in stories and what they like in comic books. You know, when it comes to actual individual pieces of art, it's just about making it look cool and making it look awesome. But when it comes to good stories, you know, I think nowadays we're kind of starving for new things. Everything's being rebooted nowadays. Um, everything's being redone 10 times over and people are getting tired of that stuff. So that's why I want to try and create something new when I get the chance to. Well, man, looking forward to seeing what you're going to put out in the future, bro. Good luck. Well, thank you, man. I do appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the um, thanks for the podium, fellas. I appreciate you giving me the time. No problem, Texas. Always. That's <clears throat> what this time's about for people to get up and ask questions. And yeah, Kevin, I remember last Twitter space, you mm-hmm. uh, you asked us to remind you if you had any questions about Web three. So if, I mean, if you have any questions about NFTs and Web three. Feel free, and I'm sure someone well, here. I mean, can I mean, my my biggest question right away for Web three is, I guess, to a layman, you know, to someone who isn't as familiar with the technology or familiar with the, I guess, the different things that it'll provide, you know. I guess what I'd be interested in is what are the benefits and what's the best way to approach educating yourself on it. Mm. <clears throat> well, I know that's a pretty I, broad question. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I'll try to give you the spark notes. I don't want to take the sure. stage, but <clears throat> basically, NFTs that it's actually it's called non fungible tokens. So it's the technology of digital ownership. It's yes. and it's kind of misconstrued because you know you see the PNGs of apes and stuff like that, and people think yeah. that's what NFTs are. It's not. It's just the technology that allows you to own that image. Right? It's blockchain. So. Basically, it's a public digital ledger that's indelible, uh, like meaning no one can change it once it's and it's public to everyone. So it's good for record keeping and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's it's verification and authenticity. So like, for, for instance, Amazon, you know, when you're ordering from their website, you'll be they're switching it right now. There will be you will be purchasing an NFT, the user interface, what like the average normal day person doesn't change at all. It's just the back end of what's actually happening. And uh, right. then Amazon will have their whole tracking system on a blockchain. So it's, you know, uh, uncorruptible pretty much. And so the See, benefits of this is one, it provides uh, basically a global ledger. So everything is public. That's a pro and a con uh, because yes. now you're not going to be able to get away with anything. Uh, right. Once like the transition to digital currency, the days of you know you going to your grandma's house and mowing the yard and getting ten bucks cash, you know that's not going to be a thing anymore. It'll be on the blockchain. They're they're trying to get rid of cash, and so the digital currency will be trackable for everybody. That's one thing about it. But then also you can own your assets, your digital whatever it is that may be that as that whatever that NFT represents. If it's digital art, if it's real estate if it's you know school records whatever it is it could be on the blockchain and you can verify who owns it and so with like digital collecting uh or digital stuff for instance video games i'm sure you've played some video games in the past yeah probably Um, yeah when you (laughs) when you 
you know, if you're playing Fortnite or CSGO or Call of Duty, when you're purchasing stuff on this, you're not actually owning anything. If Call of Duty or whatever platform this is goes down, all everything you just spent money on goes down with it. You know, you know what I mean? It's yeah, not yeah. separate. But with this new thing of digital ownership, you are no longer subject to that third party. Uh, like your transactions won't have to go through PayPal. Your, your, whatever your NFTs are, whether that be, you know, video game items or physical, it represents physical assets. You, it won't be subject to other people. You actually own it in your wallet. So it's just a new type of ownership and peer to peer transactions that is, yeah, it just allows a lot more stuff to happen. And the idea of digital ownership is foreign. It's never been a thing before. So, well, I mean, if I can make an analogy and you please feel free to correct me, but you know, we all understand things our own way, I guess. But I'm a big, I'm a big fundamental believer in objective truth in the fact that, you know, once we all make a distinction, then we can all get on board with what that means. So I guess if I'm describing this correctly, and as I say, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it's the equivalent of, say, if I do a drawing and I ink the drawing on paper and that's the original piece of art. And then someone were to take that drawing and then photocopy it and sell it, but try to sell it for the same price. It's not authentic because it's not the real thing. So you're saying that this blockchain and this uh, Web3 would essentially mean that the digital piece of art is then, I guess you could say, minted or made into its own thing. Mm -hmm. And then it can't be, you know, Google, click save, then you don't own it. You just have a copy. It's not the same thing. Exactly. There's no verifying. Like, I mean, you could theoretically still write on the NFT. You could still right click, save it. But one, it's not on the blockchain. So you, not there's no, it's not authenticated. No proof that you own it. And two, you can't sell a PNG. I could sell that piece of art if I wanted to, if it's on the blockchain, you would, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, you could sell a PNG. No, you can't really sell a PNG. There's no way. You know what I'm saying? Like, so no, no. that's the difference. You were right. That's, that was a good analogy. Okay, I'm just making sure I understand correctly yeah. what you're saying. So that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, like I say, I mean, I'm, I'm a very forward thinker. I've always been of the mind that, you know, whether you do or don't like something, that doesn't really matter. It's, if it's working, it's working. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to talk and remember what the hell a fucking revolver looks like. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I would never be, I mean, I know I see a lot of people are avidly against this stuff. And I don't think, I think coming from Ireland, we're not really avidly against anything. We're just kind of cool. You know, we just kind of go with it um, over here. So I see a lot of people, you know, very outspoken against NFTs and against blockchain and against all of this stuff. Is there any particular reason why that is? I understand that there's, you know, there's always going to be chancers. There's always going to be people who are trying to make a quick dollar and try to screw people over. I get that. You know, everyone knows that. But that's just, don't be a dickhead. But is there any kind of real reason that people would have such a gripe with this stuff? Um, no. Realistically, there's not. I mean, the technology, there could be. Because if you don't want everything on a public digital ledger that everyone can see, including the government, then mm-hmm. I could see people being against it. Sure. But it's also provides so much convenience. It gets rid of so, uh, basically any third, really third party services like escrow contracts and real estate, uh, just third party systems in general become smart contracts. Uh, so there's, there's basically the technologies there and there's a bunch of different projects that are being built. There's a, sh- and there's a bunch of different crappy projects out there, but there's also a bunch of, you know, real good projects. So anybody can build on a blockchain. It's mm-hmm. just, you just, uh, yeah, it's about sif- siphoning out the good ones versus the bad. And since I mean, it's yeah, beginning, that, that it's be my, sure. Yeah. I mean, that was going to be my next, my next thing is do the pros outweigh the cons? Because I mean, look, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, banks are great, but they have their cons too, you know? So the question would be, you know, do the pros outweigh the cons? And if the pros do outweigh the cons, well, then that's just, that's just the, the way it is, you know, that's life. Yeah. And it's interesting too. Uh, I know people, a lot of people are worried because there's a tons of scams in the space. It is a little unique because you you're in control of your own wallet. Um, bit meanings it's like your bank, your wallet and everything in one, and you mm-hmm. have complete control over it. And a lot of people aren't used to self custody of that, uh, magnitude. Yes, yes, yes. 
So yes, yes. if you, you know, if you're, you get scammed, people, if you connect your wallet to an incorrect site. Someone no can take you. So yeah, there's definitely, I was just going to say, if you connect your wallet to a bad website, someone could take all of your stuff. So you really do. It's self custody. You have to be responsible for your own wallet. And that's that. And that's, you know, a lot of people get tricked. You know, it's it just, it's the way of the world. Unfortunately. So like, well, I mean, that's the, but you, you've hit the nail on the head. I mean, this was happening a hundred years ago when, you know, don't walk on the street with your money in your hand. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, you know, use a bit of common sense. Yeah, I get, I, I hear you again. It's it all sounds like regular stuff. It's just changing form from practical or I use, if you say analog to digital. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's just the, uh, new, I mean, I know a few countries, America, Russia, China, Japan have all announced that they're transitioning to a digital currency in some form or fashion, at least working on it. So, yeah. Oh, people are making some wild calls in the crypto space today that uh, the banks are going to crash here in the next 90 days and Bitcoin is going to be everyone's outlet. I don't know how <laughs> that's a wild that, prediction. That shit, that, that shit always happens. I mean, a buddy of mine was really big into cryptocurrencies there for a while and like this is way, way back. Like this is maybe just at the start of 2021. And they were talking, it was like just at the time when Elon Musk was going on um, Saturday Night Live. He was, God love him, he was all talk about how Elon's going to set the fucking world on fire with his new crypto mentality. And of course, then Bitcoin crashed. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... That's the thing, even with the stock market and all these things, it's still just big players um, finessing. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always going to be like that, right? Mm -hmm. hey, hey, work, as as every new currency system like that. that gets introduced, uh, there's always going to be public outcry because, you know, it is a whole new currency system. Uh, of people, people are scared of it. People don't like change. And Yeah, 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 yeah. Different. It also gives a lot of control to the government. <laughs> Excuse my interruption. Kevin, you asked, uh, what's the benefit of an NFT for an artist, right? Is that mm -hmm. what that was? So here's an idea, right? So let's say, for instance, you're the first creator that decided, you know what? I have a new project coming up and I want to introduce it to, to the world. Well, if you, let's say you introduce that character, but you introduced it digitally for the first time anybody's ever seen it and you're saying... Uh, let, let's call the character ABC. So ABC's first appearance is going to be digital and I'm releasing only a thousand of these. I'm going to draw it live and that's going to be his or her first appearance. Uh, so yeah. then, right? So then, you know, you put it on the market and, you, and, and, and a thousand people decide to buy that first appearance because of your character and they want to support you. Then you, okay. you, release, your, you release your comic book and it becomes super. You know, it, it, you know, God willing, it, it is very successful. Mm -hmm. In the future, everybody's looking for a character's first appearance, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if if, if, if Kevin Keane said ABC's first appearance is this live drawing that I did, and I sold a thousand of them, every time that gets resold, you get the royalties forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you. I hear you. See, see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if you decide, and and if you have, you know, you know. It, it, the conviction that Todd had in 1992 when he released Spawn, and let's say he did it digitally, and he said, "This is the this is the character's first appearance, and I'm going to draw it, and I'm only going to sell a thousand of these." Well, everyone's going to be trying to jump on those thousands because 30 years, you know, push 30 years forward. Look what's happening to Spawn number one. Let's say if he only if he only had a thousand of those, spawn number one would probably wouldn't be selling for, because right now CGC spawn number one, nine, eight graded is probably like $180, $200. Mm -hmm. But that was in the millions that sold copies of that. That's pretty yeah. damn good right now. Well, what if there's only a thousand of those? I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, and the hardcore collectors are going to be like, I want this person's first appearance. Of course, yeah, I want to support that, yeah. And be a part and then, of the ship. Right, because Todd only has that original cover. He's only, he's only drawn it one time. Yeah. Now, granted, Todd's never sold it, but if he sells it, once he sells it and it's out of his hands, whoever oh. resells it, 
Cloud's not going to get the royalties from that. Yes, 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 yes. That makes sense. I hear you now, man. That's but in, in in the case of the digital world, no matter how many times they get resold, you're always as the creator will always get the creator fee, the whatever the royalty is. It comes back to the artist. I get you. And, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it doesn't. That's another either. Thing. Like it doesn't get torn or tattered or anything like that. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the benefit of digital for sure. Yeah. I mean, look. You guys are making damn good points. As I say, I'm open to all this stuff because, I mean, at the end of the day, as a creator, I want to make, look, I'll, I'll be very blunt, right? I think artists get pigeonholed quite a bit um, when it comes to business sense. Um, I think artists get pigeonholed because, you know, the, the whole analogy of the starving artist, you know? Um, and... And that comes down to, I think, artists are generally more emotive people. We're more creative. Therefore, we, we try to express ourselves in artwork. And the problem is, is that a lot of artists don't know how to monetize that. They don't know how to create income. And that's why you see a lot of guys and a lot of girls and a lot of people, they, they can't make ends meet because they just do it because they love drawing or they love playing music or they love, you know, etc. And whereas I... Well, I've always viewed drawing as more of a trade, you know. I've always viewed it as, it's, you know, it's a, it's a tactile thing. You're using your hands and your head at the same time. So I wouldn't view it as an academic thing. Yeah, there's plenty of academic artists out there, and they're awesome. But, you know, there's, there's also plenty of dudes out there who would just draw, and they would draw, you know, high-level stuff. So if I see creatively that i could make stories and characters that you know this community or a wider audience would resonate with and would love awesome that's that's the creative side of me satiated but obviously you know my creative side ain't paying my my electricity bill so i got to make that money and so if i felt that i could make the money and fulfill that your you know urge to you know, not, not, I got, I guess I won't say impress, but captivate people with, with characters and story, then yeah, you know, that's certainly something I would definitely take very seriously. And I appreciate your explanation. All of, all of your explanations to tell you the truth. It's been very enlightening. Thank you. Yeah, Texas, uh, that was a pretty good, uh, example. So, um, I'm even interested in tell, taking you on a lot of pitches, start pitching a lot of 16, 18 year old, 19 year old artists. <laughs> Can you imagine that? But that's really cool. So, uh, Hey, Kevin, uh, appreciate you again. Um, you know, yeah, uh, man. I'm fascinated, um, watching your, your characters. Uh, I, I love how muscular your characters are. I mean, they just look product. so powerful. I'm a product so. of the nineties, man. <laughs> I'm a product of the 90s when comic books were big and loud. I mean, that guy is buff, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, listen, you don't want to... Like, I know um, the original iterations of Gunslinger, he was actually quite scrawny. He was quite skinny. But when right. Todd when Todd revealed his version and he was this big beefcake, I was like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the Gunslinger I can get behind. Yeah, and I've always, and and that was kind of I think that's what was so iconic about Greg Capullo and he, when he was drawing Spawn in that four hundred pound frame, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just a really a thick type of character, and you know some of the artists throughout the time. Yeah, you see Spawn, and he's kind of scrawny. I've seen some where his legs are just like. They it never did a squat in his life. Like, come on, he was he was a <laughs> special, special soldier. Like the guy did worked out. You know what do they uh, call it? The bear crawl. Yeah, yeah. You know, that you know he was doing that shit every day for like five years. Come on. Yeah, I mean, come on. The guy is gonna have some muscular, you know, definition. So, yeah, I, I like watching a lot of your characters and and. Well, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. You bring it back, so it's it's a. Uh, it's really cool. Are you, uh, we had, um, Daniel, uh, Enriquez on last night and he said that he was working on some secret top secret projects. Are you working on any top secret projects as of right now? Um, I mean, you don't I, I, it, but. I've always got something on the go. 
I mean, that's me. You know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I think I believe if I'm not wrong, but I believe the Irish invented hustling. So, <laughs> um, I've always got something going, um, right now, nothing mega secret as such. Um, I'm doing a lot of creator own stuff at the moment in the background. Um, you know, just trying to make sure I'm keeping the lights on, keeping my bills paid. Um, I've got a, a, a King Spawn cover coming out on my birthday, actually, which is kind of cool. Um, um, which issue is it? King Spawn 22, I think. One second, I'll tell you then. Yeah, King Spawn 22. Um, May? Yeah, May the 24th um, is, uh, I believe, the release date on that one. Um, so outside of that, I mean, I've got a crap ton of creator own stuff that I'm working on, which I'm excited to because, again, going back to talking about creative freedom, creator-owned is, is my favorite thing in the world because it's basically giving me complete freedom to do whatever the hell I want with with characters with the with the idea of them being as cool as possible. Um, but, it, you know, if there was anything truly very specially secret, I would, I would definitely be teasing you a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Kevin, um, you know, I listening to you, you're very dedicated to your craft and your artwork, um, you know, and speaking from my experiences of just the daily grind of chasing your dreams and 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 always pushing yourself. What is your day to day life like? Like, what do you usually do as far as by the time you wake up and by the time you go to bed? What do you usually do throughout your your day? My regular day is I get up at 7 a.m. Um, I get up at 7 a.m. My girlfriend is a teacher, so she goes and starts work quite early over here. They start, I think they started like 20 to 8 in the morning. Um, so I see her off. We recently got a new dog, so he's kind of screwed up my routine a bit because he's just He's very young, so I gotta make sure he's taken care of and play with him. But um, by nine a.m., I'm drawing, and I will stay drawing until I'm done, which could be could be six p.m. or it could be eight p.m. or it could be ten p.m. Um, it doesn't really matter; it has to get done. So um, after that, I unwind for about two hours. Um, I'm an, I'm a big video gamer. I love gaming, so I, uh, I I usually like to put an hour aside in the evenings if I can. If I if I'm not on a deadline, I'll I'll put on Call of Duty or Battlefield or Metal Gear Solid or Hitman and play those. I've been playing a lot of Red Dead Redemption lately. I wonder why. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but um, yeah. So I mean that that's kind of my day to day. You know, and uh, the life of a comic book artist is extremely boring because we basically draw <laughs> that's the best answer no i will say when i'm off a deadline and when i'm a bit more free form um i uh, i actually i try to play my my drums as much as possible so that's a big you. one that's a big one for me i've been a drummer for 20 years so it's like a it's like an itch every so often i gotta just sit down and hit my kiss you know do do you ever get like a creative block? And if so, what do you do in your you know to kind of stay fresh and kind of yeah create a block yourself yeah create a block hits yeah it hits everybody. Um, I find creative block is generally um, fatigue. You know you're just tired and you need to take a breather. So what I like to do if I have like I guess prolonged uh, creative block you know writer artist block. If it's prolonged, if it's going on longer than a couple of days and I just feel burnt out, what I'll do is I, I always know in my mind and my heart what inspires me. And so I always go back to that. So, you know, it, it's, it's essentially what, what makes you emote, you know, what, what, what hits you hard enough that makes you want to express yourself. So, like, I remember in 20 i think it was 2018 i got really bad artist block where i actually just didn't want to draw i was drawing every day but i just didn't want to you know um and what i did was i started playing dark souls and bloodborne and i engaged my brain in something completely new in a, in a type of a game that i wouldn't normally play 
that would punish me for not paying attention to it. And so once I got into it and had that click moment where I was like, oh shit, I really like playing these games. I then kind of wanted to go drawing again and I wanted to draw those kinds of characters. And so once I kind of, I guess, I guess engaged my brain in a different way, it made me want to come back to what I knew. Is, is that making sense? Yeah, I understand. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I generally find that if you, if you find yourself blocked, it's because you're, you're either tired or bored and the worst is if it's both, if you're tired and bored, well then you really have to figure out a, a kind of a, a way to shock your system into kind of reigniting the fires and wanting to do it again. Cause ultimately it comes down to, do you want to do it or not? You know, there's plenty of people out there are all oh, talk, but if you're one of these people that actually does things and you find yourself getting burnt out, well, that's just fatigue and monotony. So you have to kind of balance things. I find that if I sit behind my drums for longer than an hour, I do want to go back drawing, you know, Who, who's your favorite drummer? Ooh, I mean, if you asked me that 10 years ago, I would have said Joey Jordison um, because I'm, I'm a Slipknot evangelist. Um, but today, I mean, Thomas Hack from Meshuga would always be in my top five. I've recently discovered a, a German drummer called Benny Gribb who he does kind of session drumming and, and technical drumming and jazz and stuff like that. He's amazing. Um, but put a gun to my head. Um, I think the drummer who writes my favorite drums is probably Joy Jorison. Yeah. That dude just attacked a drum kit. We got a question from the audience too afraid to unmute. I'll ask him for him is, are you open to doing covers for independent creators? Yes. Well, there's your answer. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, get, I get approached at least three or four times a week for people looking for me to do some stuff for them. And um, generally speaking, if I have the time, I'll do it. No problem. You know, I, if I have the time, I say yes. If I don't have the time, I say no. Uh, but I always try to facilitate. You know, I always try to make sure that you know, even, I mean, I, I'm of the mind that it doesn't matter how big or small the scale is. If people are willing to, you know, invest in their, in their product by getting a cover from somebody like me, who would be, you know, a high level professional, I guess is the best way to put it. Then I'll always treat it with the same respect as I would the likes of Spawn or Batman or any of those. What is your uh, favorite character to draw? Like most fun for you, Gunslinger? <laughs> Gunslinger is the hardest. Gunslinger is way harder than OG Spawn because there's so many more elements going on. You know, Spawn, he's just, he's just an, well, he's a naked dude with a kid, you know. Whereas Gunslinger, he's got a pants, he's got the bullet belt, he's got the jacket. The jacket is designed a certain way. He's got the skulls on his, on his arm. He's got chains on his arm, the fucking revolvers, you know. <laughs> Gunslinger is always the, the hardest. He's definitely the most challenging. Uh, in, in, in my experience, my favorite is Haunt by far. Ooh. I love Haunt. Haunt was the comic book that got me back into comic books to the point where I actually wanted to pursue it. So, um, the fact that I got to draw him on a cover last February was a major bucket list moment for me. Speaking of that, Kevin, it's frisky. Uh, Yo. because of the you know, whenever you stated about that, about Haunt, I have, uh, I'd never read Haunt before then. Okay. And so I, I went and got the Immortal Edition. Nice. Man, it was It's awesome. stellar. Yeah, yeah, it's stellar. Like, it's some of the yeah. best comic book, it's some of the best comic book experience you can possibly have. Like, it's yeah. absolutely amazing. Yeah, so here's a funny one, right? So I think I said this on the Twitter spaces, but if anybody who wasn't there is here, no. I was kind of reigniting my fire to pursue comic books in 2012, 2013. And I, um, I discovered Haunt, and it was the first time I ever read 20 issues of a book back to back ever. You know, I just couldn't put it down. And because of that... Um, I decided I was going to re-pursue comics um, and, and actually properly 
devote my time to learning how to draw properly and to actually pursue this seriously. And um, I discovered Haunt February 2013. And February 2023, I drew a cover with him on it. So, you know, that's if there was ever a testament to, you know, if you're serious about something, chase that shit because it works out. I couldn't believe I couldn't believe it worked out for me, but it did. And as it happens, ten years almost to the month, I got to do a haunt cover. So there's definitely value in pursuing what you're passionate about. Well, it, it was a fantastic cover. I'm looking at it right now, Scorch 15 um, with haunt. Post it up in the chat. All right. Uh, it's a. Uh... Like of all the covers that I've had published so far, I love them all, but you know, that one was particularly special. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have some of these gun fanatics telling me I'm drawing the fucking revolver wrong. You get a lot of, you get a lot of people scrutinizing your revolvers. Uh, you'd be surprised, yeah, you'd be surprised. Some people are like, Oh, you don't put that there, you don't put that there. It's a fucking comic book, man. It's all good. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> You ever get a revolver uh, next to you to get some? Yes, rubber? actually. Yeah, actually, I have. Um, yeah, I had a handguns are illegal in Ireland, so um, I had to get a replica of like a an, an eighteen an eighteen twelve or something like that. It was in a museum, and I asked if I could take it out and photograph it in my hand in like every angle you could imagine. Hey guys, I got a question for Kevin, if that's okay. Absolutely. Uh, so Kevin, uh, lately I've been seeing a lot of color posts on your uh, on your social media lately. Mm. I'm just kind of wondering, as a colorist myself and somebody uh, that that you've shared my work over the years, which I do uh, appreciate. Is that Matt? Oh, absolutely, it is, buddy. Uh, I knew. I, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. You had a feeling, eh? Yeah. Good to good to finally talk to you, bud. Yeah, man. It's really cool to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just wondering, with all those color posts that you have lately, what's your process, man? Like, what what's going through your mind when you start doing it? Do you have a specific style in mind? Do you have yeah. something in like you go on for? Like, it's it's always interesting to see that when I whenever I see your black and whites and everything else like that, and and some of the coolest shit that's out there. And uh, thank you. Thank you. And it, it's it's some of my favorite art to color too, and you know that. And uh, you it, always it, do it justice, dude. I wouldn't share uh, otherwise. I I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And uh, so I'm just kind of wondering, what's what's kind of like your process going through your mind when you when you go through some of those awesome posts you're doing lately? I mean, I'm a big fan of animated, right? I always have been. I don't know why. I think it's because before I ever see, when I, I grew up in in a, the southeast of Ireland, right? Mm -hmm. they, comic books ain't really a thing over here. Even back then, like there was like two news agents in my entire, in, what you guys would refer to as a state, you know, we would call it a, a county over here, um, but. There was like two places that did comic books and they were quite a while away. So I grew up watching animated cartoons and I fell in love with those styles, you know, the classic Batman animated series in the 90s, the X-Men, Spider-Man, mm. um, then of course Spawn, which was akin to Batman in how dark it was. It was a little darker, obviously in subject matter it was way darker, but in terms of the actual animation style, it was way, way darker. Um, so... I try to kind of, I guess, in my, like, like to go on what Frisky said, you know, my characters are muscular because I'm a product of the 90s comic books, but mm -hmm. my colors are vibrant because I'm a product of 90s animated TV. Um, so my process is keep it, don't over, I guess, what's the best way to put this? Don't, um, I guess, burn people's eyes with, tons of highlights and tons of layering and all that stuff just sure, yeah. keep it subtle and keep it vibrant you know you don't need to worry too much no you see i have an advantage over a lot of colorists kind of coming up is that i know anatomy and i know how to shade anatomy correctly a lot of colorists that i know don't learn anatomy so they kind of just wing it and Sometimes it works. Sometimes it looks great. Other times it doesn't, you know, and you can tell when somebody has a kind of good balance act in their head of, you know, this is where I think the anatomy goes. I'm not going to worry about it too much. And then there's other guys who, who is like, you know, the leg doesn't have 60 muscles. Relax, mm -hmm. you know. Sure. So 
So at least I hope some doctor is going to fucking crucify me now and say, actually, the leg does. But, <laughs> you know, I like to keep it slick. Like if I was to open this guy up, you know, this spawn that I did. Yeah, that's one of my favorite ones that I've seen lately, bud. Thank you, man. Um, like one thing I love about your colors, Matt, is there's great subtlety, you know? You have I great subtlety that, really in, your, in your gradations. You don't overemphasize things. You keep it nice and subtle. For me, you know, my inking style is so stark that I can't help but, you know, go into things a little bit deeper. Um, mm. But for an image like this, I always think to myself, right, how do we make it dark but still visually pleasing? And so you have to try and, I guess, practice just that nice balance, like right here. I have a big cross section. One sec. Like, like, if I bring up the hand, if I like right here, the darker sections, I try to make them just dark enough so that you know it's a shadow, but just light enough to know that your eye isn't being bombarded by tons of different levels, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I guess that's the, the best way I could describe the process. But I mean, at the same time, okay, I just wing it and hope for the best sometimes. <laughs> well, I tell you, like one of my favorite ones that I've ever done is that Batman Beyond that I got framed up for Christmas by my wife there that I told you about, eh? Yeah, the one of him diving. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's one of my, my favorite ones. The colors, the purples, the backgrounds. It's it's definitely one of my favorites. That's uh, I mean, actually, it's one of my favorite ones that you've done is that Batman Beyond. I mean, I love you know me like I love, I love all your work and everything else. Like that. that Batman one is just for some reason it's like pinnacle. Like anytime I hear your name, that's the bloody one that sticks out to me. That goes <laughs> that's the top notch of, of of what I love about your, your shit that you put out there. Well, I, that's very, very flattering, man. I really do appreciate that. And, and to everyone here, like Matt is a seriously, seriously good colorist. You should check out his work. The stuff you did, uh, the was a Cyclops you did the other day from Brett Booth. Oh yeah. 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 Like, like that was tasty. You know, it was really slick because a lot of guys color Brett's work because his inks are so detailed and so intense. Mm. They tend yeah. to try and match him yeah. in his, in his, in his, or I guess his pencil. Sorry, it's a Delso is his ink. Yeah. Um, but um, they try to match a Delso and Brett's depth of line in the colors and it can end up looking like a massive mess. But you kept it nice and simple and you just accentuated what needed to be accentuated and it worked. It really, really worked. Cause like, I mean, I appreciate I, I, that. Well, I mean, I, I, I've done covers on Gunslinger. Brett's working on Gunslinger, so I'm, you know, very familiar with his art. I'm very familiar with his work. Obviously, growing up, I was very familiar with his work too. Oh, um, yeah. You know, and him and Nadelso are a seriously powerful team. So, you know, trying to balance colors on top of their lines is really hard. So you're one of the few guys I see online. And you know, going back to that Batman piece you mentioned, you know, Yours is the only one I've shared. And like, I'm fairly cutthroat about oh, that. I'll yeah, only, I'll only, <laughs> well, I mean, I'll only share the work I like. I get, yeah. I get at least five times a week, I'll get people, you know, hey, I, I colored your art. Um, would you share it? And I'm like, mm -hmm. I want to be polite. I don't want to discourage anybody. I want to say, look, thank you for doing that. But I think you need more work. Or I think, you know, yeah. you know this doesn't, this doesn't benefit me to share. But with yours, dude, every time, like the one I, uh, you did, of Batman with his arms folded. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that was my favorite one that you did, just because it worked, man. It just that fucking... ice blue in the background, right? That's uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, that's uh, you know, the funny thing with the the process with 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 your work is that it's like I already know what I want to do because the, the 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 beautiful work's already there. Like my mind when I when I do anybody, especially yours or or you know, working on a booth or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. is is don't fuck it up you know <laughs> because that's that's the biggest thing like when i see your work and how immaculate it looks to to what the character's pinnacle visual aspect is it, i just think okay how can i not fuck this up <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and just make it work for you i think right? that's something i think that's something every creative person thinks about oh, at, the, at the higher level is just don't fuck it up that's all you know well, just rely, I mean, rely uh, on your skill set and let the work let your I, art do the talking I, I really, I, you know, when I first started doing this uh, a couple of years ago, I mean, you are definitely one of the uh, uh, biggest people that have gotten my name out there to help me get a bigger following, bigger uh, uh, opportunities. So, you know, bottom of my heart, thank you so much, Kev. Like, I really, really appreciate that. Like, Matt, it's anytime, dude. And like, it's easy with you because you're good. <laughs> you know, it's very easy with you because I know what you'll send me back is awesome. Like the one you did a Joker, fucking sweet mm -hmm. too. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And I love seeing when you take the time to do my work. And I like you're thanking me. I'm thanking you just the same. All right. Well, I do have to hop off here, but uh, it was great talking to you. Thank you so much, guys, for putting this on. This has been fantastic. Rock and roll, brother. Take care. Don't be a stranger. Hey, Matt, if you could uh, post up some of your links to your Instagram account and Twitter in our artist alley. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Greatly appreciate it. But that was really cool. I'm glad you guys got to talk to each other. So very good. Yeah, that was awesome. I wasn't, that was a pleasant, uh, a pleasant surprise. Well, I, I got to, I, I got a, I got a five year old daughter with a broken foot upstairs from uh, so I got oh, to, uh, I got to pull some dad duty right now. So oh, I uh, yeah, appreciate the time here. Okay, rock and roll, brother. Take care. All right, all the Take best, your little one. Thank you, boy. Bye bye. <clears throat> nice. As you guys, as you guys can probably see, I rework shit a lot. You know, <laughs> not, I, I rub stuff out and I redo things quite a bit because I like to, I like to kind of experiment. And I like to kind of play around with what might work and might might not work. <laughs> Oftentimes it might not work, but this is turning out pretty good. Oh yeah. Hey, hey, Kevin. A- as I uh, uh, watch some of your art, um, I always encounter a lot of artists making comments that hands are the toughest to to draw. Yeah. And it's one character that you have of Haunt on the one cover. I mean, it's up close and personal with his hand. Oh how yeah. Did you, how did you? really hone in on the hand and really get it done you know th- to this level uh on this cover like what what was your process on getting that done Oop, i'll show you Ooh. oh okay now right this is a rough version of it but what you don't know, and this is, these are like weird little connections that I make. Right? So that's kind of a rough example of how I would have started it. Obviously, I would have added a lot more weight and depth to the cylinders just to make the hand look like more of a claw. Um, but what I've drawn, right, if, just check this out. Right, if I was to put a body on it and draw some lines out, it becomes a spider. See what I mean? Yeah. Essentially, I learned how to draw spiders' faces to get really good at, like, the shape of hands. Because you know why Spider-Man's hand does that? It's because it replicates the shape of a spider's mouth. And so I learned by looking at Todd's Spider-Man hands and stuff like that, that making those weird connections. But essentially, you know, the reason I drew Haunt's hand like that was a statement. It was to show people, number one, I love the character, and so I'm going to draw him in a really difficult pose, but I'm also going to put the hardest part front and center. Yeah. Because, ha- you know, Haunt isn't exactly a difficult character to draw in the sense that, you know, he's, you know, he's a gritty Spider-Man, you know. But at the same time, there are elements of his character are very difficult. You, you can't overdo the white sections of his costume because there's so much miniature detail. You know, when, when Greg drew him or when Ryan Otley drew him, they put in tons of detail onto the white sections. And so trying to make sure that, you know, it's balanced correctly is the main thing. But yeah, the hand, that was just a pure case of like, watch this, you know, I guess every so often you do have to quietly just kind of show off a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know. That's awesome, man. I love it. But like the, the way to draw hands, yeah, hands are hard. Yeah, that's the thing. Har- hands will always be the hardest because it's a lot of small areas moving in connection to other small areas. But the best way to describe drawing hands is you got to learn how to draw them first, right? So a lot of people will draw a square, circle, circle, um, index, middle, ring, and pinky. Then you have the separator. Then you got the wrist. It's manipulating. This is the tricky bit. So how do you manipulate it? Well, you have to learn about the shapes first. So the finger is three sections. Knuckle, arch, arch. And then you just basically learn how to put those cylinders together and how they affect space. So learning cylinders is the key. And if I was to keep drawing those cylinders, and then put one there. All of a sudden, a hand takes shape, right? Wow. So it's, it's about learning how the shapes work 
not what it looks like. I mean, the biggest mistake a lot of new artists make is they try to draw from the left side of their brain. And that's the creative side. The creative side is great for ideas, but it sucks for drawing because you will always want to keep changing it. The reason you draw from the right side of your brain is because it's logical. And that's why you see anatomy looking right. So this shoulder is in relation to this shoulder. Or, you know, his, his, you can tell, you know, that's his back, that's his waistline, that's his butt, those are his legs. That's because I'm drawing with the right side of my brain, which your right side of your brain is reading as, ah, that's what I'm looking at. Whereas, you know, if, if, I, was to, if I was to maybe not know my proportions correctly and I move his arm down here, and I'm just drawing away, but all of a sudden you look back at it and you're like, wait, no, what the fuck is going on with his arm? That's because the creative side of your brain is getting in the way and you're not looking at the logical side of things. So when it comes to drawing hands, it's hard logic. You just have to know how the shapes work before you can start to make it look emotive and, you know, expressive. I guess is the best way I would describe it. And every, every artist is different, by the way. There's, you ask that to 10 different artists, they'll tell you tell 10 different answers. Well, it seems very logical. I mean, it made sense to me. I'm a very logical, I mean, you know, linear thinking type of individual anyway. So that makes mm -hmm. sense to me. Sweet. I have done my job. <laughs> Sweet. Um, but yeah, I mean, all of drawing. Like, I mean, if I was to break this down, right, look. Circle, calf muscle, cylinder, circle, heel, triangle. You see what I'm saying? These are all shapes. And right. the more familiar you get with them, the more you can refine them down and make them look more authentic to the point where, like here, this, this hand right here, this would scare the shit out of 100% of artists at the beginning because, oh my God, I've never seen a hand at that angle before. But... The more familiar you get with it, right? I'm just going to knock this in. The more familiar you get with it, the more comfortable you are, the more you realize, okay, there's less for me to actually look at here. All I'm looking at are, are fingers and thumbs because there's no palm visible. Just like that, the hand's in, you know? But that's just familiarity. Um, that's just familiarity with the, um, with the character, so... And familiarity with the object itself. Now, I'm going to redo those because they suck. But that's, if you're a younger artist, you know, that's perfect. That's, that's a really good start. If you're at my level, then you're going to look at that and scrutinize it and say, I can do better. And so I will. I'm going to do, I only just did that fast to give you an idea. But I like to start on the outside and work my way in. We got a lot of people in the crowd eat, loving your art lesson. Listen. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Do you find yourself being very self-critical of your own art? Oh, extremely, extremely. <laughs> do you, do you ever just got to be like, get to the point where like, hey, shit, this is good enough. Got to work. Yeah, gotta, yeah, so. you do. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I've had five or six instances where I'm like, fuck it. It's good enough. <laughs> you know, that, that fucking, uh, that Bill O'Reilly will do it live, you know, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Um, I've had plenty of times where that's, that's happened on just smaller jobs. You know, I would never do that with Spawn genuinely because I love the character too much to put out bad work or to put out, you know, substandard work. Whereas it's a, a smaller thing where it's just kind of a menial job where I just need to get it done. And yeah, like I did a, I did a job for an airline once. And you would swear, you would swear like this was going to be the biggest publication on the New York Times bestseller list, you know? And they were like, yeah, we just need this. I'm like, it, doing what it's supposed to do, you know? I've, I've indicated everything as you want it to be indicated. They're like, yeah, we just feel like, I'm like, oh, fuck it. Like, take the fucking thing, you know? <laughs> and I'm not being cynical either. I, you know, I, I like to work everything to a high standard, but there are just sometimes it, it comes down to who you're working with too. This is such a sweet piece. It's all coming to, coming to life more and more. It's like uh, Emperor's New Groove, Kronk. Oh, yeah. It's all coming together. <laughs> nice. Good rate movies. What are some of your favorite movies? Well, if you had to go to, if you had a go-to movie, like, all right, I, I want to watch a movie. 
all reliable. What is your go-to movie? Uh, I've got like I've got three right off the top of my head. Perfect. Four, four, four. Um, seven. Huh? Seven. Um, seven by David Fincher. Um, one of the greatest films ever made, in my opinion. I uh, gonna have to go to. You haven't seen seven. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, man. No way. <laughs> I uh I have not seen seven, no, but I'll put it I'm putting it on the list. Dude, you need to you're actually gonna be so mad at yourself. Get off the stage you've taken, now. Yeah, you've taken so long to see that. It is Get a off. classic movie. It's so good. It's one of the greatest crime films of all time. This, this um, looks like it got three push-ups. You, you embarrassed got, us in front of Kevin Keane. Dude, you got some fucking homework to do. <laughs> Well, you, you still got three more movies to tell me. Um, yeah, so Seven, The Nice Guys, with uh, Russell Crowe and um, what's his name? Rain, Rain Gosling. Just lie and say you saw it. I've seen it. You've seen it? Yeah. Yeah, I've I seen love, it. I, I love Shane Black's movies. Um, so yeah, uh, The Nice Guys and Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I wouldn't have expected that one. Kiss, yeah, Kiss, Kiss, Kiss Bang Bang is just this, this silly, fun, ridiculous movie that by the end of it, you actually feel great. You know, it's just a damn good, like, it's, it's a kind of a pseudo crime, pseudo comedy. It might as well be, the, the nice guys might as well be like the spiritual sequel to it. Mm-hmm. But Ro- Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer, you had me at hello, you know. Yeah, this one looks good too. I gotta put this one on the list. Um, and the other one I would probably say would be Dark Knight. Oh, classic. You know. No, here's the thing, right? I'm I'm quite contentious when it comes to Batman movie arguments, right? But you see, sorry, no, I'm just going to draw your attention back, right? See how much more natural I got that hand? Yeah. See how his baby fingers kind of slack a little bit, right. holding the chain? It's that kind of stuff that as you get more familiar with the drawing of the shapes, things start to look a little bit more natural and things start to look a lot better, you know what I'm saying? Um. But uh, no, I think the best Batman film ever made is The Dark Knight. If the context of the Batman film you want to watch is ultra realism. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think Batman 89 with Jack Nicholson and Keaton is iconic for almost every good reason. It's iconic because it's not only is it a great Batman movie, but all the acting is amazing, all the characters, like everything about it was lightning in a bottle, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But my personal preference of Batman movies from back then is actually Batman Forever with Val Kilmer and Jim Carrey mm-hmm. and Tommy Lee Jones. And the reason I say that is it is the closest live action iteration of the animated series. You know, like that classic animated Batman series because it's over the top, it's colorful, it's insane, the action. Like, you think about it by today's standards, right? No, I wasn't a big fan of the Batman with Robert Pattinson. Um, I think when my friend asked me, what did I think of it? I said, it's definitely one of the movies of all time. <laughs> you know, because if you, if you can tell me what happened in it, then I'll defer to your greater judgment because I watched that movie twice and I don't know <laughs> what the fuck happened in it. It was three hours of Batman standing still. So I don't know. It just didn't resonate with me. But Batman Forever, you think about the very opening section of the movie. You got Batman suiting up, jumps into a Batmobile that was designed by H.R. Geiger and goes out and takes on Two-Face in the middle of Gotham City and Three minutes into the movie, you're watching Batman swinging from a helicopter while Two Face is shooting at him from a helicopter. You know, it doesn't get more comic book than that, in my opinion. So I'll kind of die on that hill. But at the same time, you can't deny The Dark Knight as the greatest Batman film, if not greatest comic book film ever. Because, I mean, I don't even need to really give it reasons, but just the whole plot is engrossing. I mean, it's two and a half hours of sheer and utter edge of your seat stuff you know and i'll leave a caveat to that uh yet best one yet because i'm very yeah. excited about the 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 new spawn that's going to come out but i absolutely, oh, absolutely no absolutely dude i completely yeah that that's a good caveat that's a good addition i like that 
There you go. Sorry, a buddy of mine is texting me because he wants to come and watch UFC. <laughs> <laughs> Watching the fights? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very rare we get a UFC where we don't have to stay up until stupid o'clock in the morning, so. Well, uh, maybe you, you got to pull up a second monitor so you can watch the fights and draw. <laughs> and my, uh, my, my girlfriend would be pretty peeved if I did that because she wants to watch them too. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing better than uh, grown men beating the shit out of each other for our entertainment. Oh, uh, you said it, man. You said it. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to cheat here a little bit just to speed this up a bit, okay? So don't. You, don't. you, you do your thing, man. You do whatever. We're just we're here for the we're here for the ride. Wow, nice. So the trick to cheating properly is you offset it slightly, so no one knows. Mm -hmm. We yeah, definitely see trick. quite a few artists utilize the copy and paste method. Yeah, it's a game changer. <laughs> now, game Kevin, changer. When you were starting to learn these this tool of, of drawing digitally. Did you do a lot of research on YouTube, like to learn how to cut and paste, or did you kind of learn it from an artist watching them do it? Did, did they teach you how to those little tips and tools to use in this Both. form? Both. Um, I, I actually spent about two years researching digital art before I ever even bought a graphics tablet, um, um, which is tell you how much of a goddamn nerd I am. But I, uh, I spent about two years playing with Photoshop, Illustrator, Sketchbook Pro, um, all of the major drawing apps that were around 10 years ago, I, I, I bought them all in inverted commas and I learned the tricks to as many of them as I could found. There was quite a lot of similarities. Um, but I, there was a guy made, um, so when I discovered manga studio, I knew, I knew I'd found the one, um, manga studio which is now Clip Studio Paint, which is what I'm working in right now. You can probably see it. I'm highlighting over here in the top left. Um, Clip Studio is, it's a Japanese application made for drawing manga, but, you know, manga and comic books are brother and sister, you know, so they all have the same tools and tricks. And I spent about two years just learning, you know, what each one would do. And Clip Studio was the one because... You know, you, you guys can see here, right? These are border lines, okay? These lines are used in real comic books. The, I'm going to use red here for one second to outline. So this is where the spine connects. This is where the book folds into the spine as you open it. And this, these red X's on the exterior are the dead zones. That's where the printer cuts everything. So mm. this part of the jacket gets cut off when it goes to print. Um, and, you know, it happens quite a bit that younger artists screw that up. They don't know how to line those. But Manga Studio and um, Clip Studio, they actually facilitate setting those borders up so you actually can do it. Now, you can do it in Photoshop as well. It takes a bit longer, um, at least I find. Um, so, um, yeah, the the... The digital drawing side, I just knew straight away it would be faster for me personally um, for the way I like to work. Everybody's different. You know, it's just a tool at the end of the day. Like drawing like this is exactly the same on paper as it is, um, you know, like what I'm doing here, I'm flipping the image, right? What that's called is balancing. Um, it's to make sure that everything is uniform. Your, your, the human eye doesn't perceive things symmetrically. So you flip the image to ensure, so like, I'll flip the image like this to make sure that on this side, as it's mirrored, it doesn't look like this leg is huge compared to this leg. Um, if you were to do that with paper, you would literally just use a mirror, a small little mirror, and hold it up to your drawing to make sure that your proportions were, were correct. So it's the same traditionally as it is digitally. It's just digitally allows you to do things just that little bit faster. Whereas, you know, before there was a huge thing. You know, actually, funnily enough, you know, with all of the negativity pushback and you know scrutiny that nfts and, and web3 gets it was the same with digital drawing about 15 years ago <laughs> and di digital drawing community is like oh you're just cheating you know you're not actually drawing it you're letting a program do it for you no <laughs> not at all because you can't teach a program the 10 15 years that it takes to learn how to draw anatomy properly or 
to draw composition. Yeah, I know there's AI nowadays is doing it, but it's not doing it well. And it might in time, but even then, you're still going to not get that personal touch. You know, AI will only be so good because it's not creative. It's binary. It's, it's, it's robotic. And that's fine. If it, if it works, it works. But you will never get the magic that can be created. Like an AI, if you were to type into an AI machine, uh, I want a former soldier who went to hell and came back with a big red cape um, with green eyes and cool markings on his face and chest with chains and spikes. Go. You're probably going to get a fucking monster nightmare, like like a fucking MC Escher nightmare fuel image, you know? Um, so that human touch is what made Spawn so special. It was the fact that Todd was able to draw so well and so cool is what made Spawn stand out. So that human element, it was the same argument back then as it is today with Web3 and NFTs, you know? People just not fully understanding the scope of it. Now everyone draws digitally, you know? Like, now everybody in comic books, it's very rare you'll find somebody, like, I think currently only pencilers and maybe a handful of inkers work traditionally, whereas the majority of the regular working artists today are all working in some way, shape, or form um, on uh, digital. Yeah, we, I think we recently had an artist who, uh, his name's Rob Willis. He's like the only artist we've had on that's still traditional. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else yeah. And all the respect in the world to him, it's not easy. You know, it's not easy. And I respect it, you know, if you're going to work, like the old school guys all work traditionally because it's what, they, it's what they know, it's what they're comfortable with. And again, it's not that different. Like, I mean, Carlo Barbary, a while back, you know, he's the main Spawn artist. Um he made mention that, you know, working digitally and, and traditionally for him is much in a muchness. It's, it's, you know, it's, he's not much faster digital or traditional. It's very much like that's just his approach. It's just he, he works one way for one reason and he might work another way for another, you know. And I respect it, you know. It's, it's not about the authenticity of, you know, oh, I'm a diehard traditional artist or oh, I'm a diehard uh, digital artist. Well, what works? Relax. Not everything needs to be a fucking argument. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Whatever works for everyone. You know, I'm a bit more I'm a bit more simple in that regard, I think. I, I don't worry too much about what other people think of my approach because that's fine. You know, try drawing like I do and see if it works for you. If it doesn't, then you just you just made an idiot of yourself. All right. We're getting there. Yeah, this is coming along. I'm gonna try and color this as fast as I can. <laughs> I mean, the, the thing is, like, uh, the Gunslinger, I, I should have picked Spawn because he would have been faster. But the Gunslinger's just, come on, like, he's so cool. Gunslinger's Gunslinger. He's just a Wild West Spawn. He doesn't really get much cooler than that. I recently started playing Red Dead Redemption 2 again. And a part of me was thinking, like, where am I going to get the hat? Like, there, there's got to be a hat like his in here somewhere, you know? Like, if oh, I was a PC gamer, I would mod him in, you know? Get a gunslinger, uh, yeah, Arthur, turn Arthur Morgan into gunslinger spawn. That'd be sweet. Yeah, right. <laughs> going around hip firing every motherfucker you see. Uh, the the whip becomes a chain. Oh yeah, oh, stop, easy, stop, easy. Again, I'm a diehard gamer, so like that that's the sort of stuff that gets me excited. Like when I see spawn in in Mortal Kombat, I'm like, fuck yeah. What is uh? What are some of your favorite games of all time? Oh, dude. Um, I'm a big stealth guy, so Splinter Cell, Metal Gear Solid, Hitman, they would have been my favorites for years and years and years. Um, I love, um, my first ever video game was Tekken, so I'll die on the hill of Tekken um, from like the good old days. Yeah. And, and my, my favorite, I mean, I love, um, I've always loved the Battlefield franchise because over here in Europe, like Battlefield is just super fun. Um, I love the OG Call of Duties. Um, the newer ones, not so much. I find that they're a little bit soulless, unfortunately, which is a shame because Call of Duty is fucking great. Um, now, one thing I will say, the stories in the campaigns of Call of Duty are always epic. They're always fantastic. I love those. Um, but my favorite FPS of all time was actually Titanfall. Wow. Um, I, I love that game. 
Titanfall and Titanfall 2 are Titanfall 2 might like uh, it is a fucking crime that Titanfall 2 didn't get more love that's what dude, I fully 100% agree with you on that one. Yeah, it, it's just it was such a unique game and it was such a and you could tell you know it's interesting the guys who made Titanfall 2 same dudes who made the original Modern Warfare 2 so you can just tell their pedigree you know yeah It was, it was, the release date was right in the middle of Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. So they were going up against two more, way more established titles and they shouldn't, EA screwed it. They shouldn't have done that um, because it actually turned out to be better than both of them. Um, but at the same time, um, when they brought out Apex, as a Titanfall lover, I felt robbed because there was no wall running and there was no mix. I was like, what the fuck? And I, I guess I'm from a generation that doesn't particularly love the whole BR Battle Royale thing. It's not really something I love. I don't mind. I played Warzone a lot when it first came out. Um, but it just isn't necessarily for me. So I, 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 I'm a fucking hipster because I'm playing Battlefield 2042. And I know everybody loves to hate that game, but it's actually great fun. What's your, what are your favorite Western movies? My favorite Western movie is probably, uh, I like the, what was it, the True Grit. Mm. True Grit was cool. Um, 310 to Yuma, really good. Um, what was that one um, with Brad Pitt? The Assassination of Someone is a really long name, really long title. Um, no. The assassination of someone by the coward. Was it the assassination of Jesse James by the coward? Yes, I think so. The assassination of Jesse James by the coward. Wow, that, I've never seen it, but that's got a long title. It's a good movie. It's a really good movie. Um, Brad Pitt. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very good movie. Um, but I think the I think my personal favorite of all time is Django. Mm. I just love I, Christoph Waltz just he stole my heart what uh do, do you have did you do you like Gunslinger Spawn over Spawn is that kind of why you went the Gunslinger out um not really no I, I I actually think I love them both equally to tell you the truth mm. I think I love them both equally you know it's like which do you prefer chocolate or peanut butter you know well, well I mean, <laughs> if, if I have to choose you know what I mean um I love um I love Gunslinger for his reasons, you know. He's like Todd describes him, you know, he's like Wolverine. He's just an isolated badass, just being an isolated badass in front of everybody with no apologies. Whereas Spawn is just Spawn, you know, he's he's so grandiose, he's like a king, hence the title, right? But I mean, Spawn is just this unique, just super simple like uh, it's very difficult for me to actually articulate now that you put me on the spot, but um, I just find that Spawn is just such a unique character. You know, he shouldn't work, but he does. Like, the cape, the chains, the costume, it, it should it should be a mess, but it isn't. It's so fucking cool because of the setting being so gritty and so rough and dark that, you know, he has his own unique attitude and, and temperament, and then you just add a Wild Western element to it. It's like, well, Chocolate and peanut butter, King. Why do we need to pick? Why can't we have both? <laughs> but you know, forget. Like I, I know I'm a professional comic book artist, but I was a fan first. Yeah. So I'll always fall on the side of you know. Don't make me choose. <laughs> do them all. Do them all. Yeah, yeah. Do we'll do it live. Exactly. Kevin, are, is there uh, characters that? you haven't worked on yet that if you were to, you know, handwrite your future of, Hey, I want to do this eventually. Is there a character that you would like to do in the future that maybe you haven't done yet so far? Um, Ghost Rider. Oh, yeah. yeah. A good I've got some pretty cool ideas for Ghost Rider. If I was uh, ever given the keys to the car or the keys to the bike at Marvel, I would try to create the, the best Ghost Rider you've not read yet. <laughs> so, 
So that was one oh, of my awesome. favorite comic books as a kid was Ghost Rider. Uh, Hell yeah, man. Those already Ghost Rider books are fucking outstanding. Yeah. Do you right, try to... Man. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. I was going to say, when you're doing your outline and all that, are you thinking of the coloring in your head? Or are you mm-hmm. do you think about the coloring until... Um, kind of. Kind of is the best answer I can give you. Um, yeah. I'm Fair. sort of thinking about it. I'm just kind of, um, to a certain point, winging it. And I, I have a pretty clear idea. You know, once the figure starts to take shape properly, I get a pretty good idea of what I want to do with him. Um, you know, I, I usually, what I do, and to anybody learning out there, it's a great method that you can use for shading is just do that. That is your best friend. You know, I, I can't recommend that highly enough, you know, because um, it logically locks your brain to that's the light source. So once you know the light source and you know what's happening, you can pretty much do whatever you want with the image if you're experienced enough. So right now I'm just kind of getting everything in. And just so you guys know as well, like if I don't get this fully colored up right now tonight before I jump off, um, I will finish it tomorrow and I'll post it up in the Discord for you. Perfect. I mean, that's, that's all obviously a worst case scenario because I am aiming to get this done tonight. So. No, we understand. You've been talking and, and everything like that with us. Uh, Kevin, so we we appreciate it. We know. Well, you see, I'm deep in it now, so I can't leave it unfinished, you know? So one way or another, this thing's getting done. I mean, I'm, I'm thankfully, I'm off tomorrow. I don't have any work planned for tomorrow, cause it's Sunday, so I wouldn't mind spending the day coloring Gunslinger. <laughs> um. Raw, were you trying to say something? Uh, hi, uh, hi, Ren. Hi, everyone. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Sorry man. for for coming too late. Hi, in the mall. <laughs> it's a family time <laughs> today, yeah. and I oh, try man. to connect to the to to the cafe. <laughs> it's so in the draw. Uh, are so amazing. Gonzalez girls look so 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 good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. I I had one question for you. Uh, what is your favorite comic character when you draw, or the most the most character you you like to draw? Um, I mean, it's it's, it's Batman for me. Um, closely closely followed by Spawn and Gunslinger, um, and then Haunt. They'd be my favorites. I do love drawing. Ghost Rider a lot. I every time I draw Ghost Rider, I enjoy it more and more. Um, and my kind of honorable mentions would be Daredevil and Carnage. This is so I I like to draw Batman. Uh, he's yeah. so awesome, draw Batman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's just the most fun to work with, isn't he? He's just so cool. Yes, I. I I I have um, my father get the the spawn core the scores core and he, he for a surprise for me one of your cores the core oh, for awesome. the scores number, number ten he awesome. gives me uh, the commit if um if I ever have the the luck of meeting you I'll sign it for you <laughs> that will go will be so awesome thank you so much my pleasure dude thank you so much for your question and for chatting. Thanks for all, as always. Our uh, Discord artist looking always to utilize artists coming in, asking advice. It's awesome to see. Happy to help. I know how hard it is when you start out. It can be very difficult. If the the one piece of advice I'd give anybody looking to get into drawing properly is confidence is key. Confidence is key. So. The more confident you are, the better you are going to be. Simple as that. Uh, Kevin gets me so awesome. I advice for my work, and I try to give that advice or um, 
for do my my draw so better, most better. I don't know who said that. <laughs> Sorry, I I yeah, am nervous. I mean, I, no, don't don't be nervous at all, dude. Jesus, it's, it's I'm just a do drawing. It's all good. Um, like I mean, I I want to encourage everybody to to try and you know improve and and to to get better. And like I say, my Instagram is always there. Shoot me a message, and I'll gladly help. I know you've sent me work before, haven't you? You've sent me. Uh, after the uh, the Twitter spaces, you sent me some of your stuff to, as well, did right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, like I said to you, just focus on the fundamentals, and 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 really commit to learning the hard stuff, and no you'll get there in no time. I promise you. You know, you're good. You're very good. You have a lot of you have a lot of pro um, what's the word potential. You have a lot of potential going forward. So I will be keeping an eye on you going forward, dude. Don't be nervous. Be confident. Thank you so much. Uh, My pleasure, I, thank you. Maybe one day it's a dream for me work with you in a comic book. Is uh, that will be so awesome and amazing for me? In one day, maybe uh, in Spawn or in other comic work with you. And that hey, dude, is... hey, dude, it's not maybe, it's when. <laughs> you hear me? Okay. Rock and roll, brother. Thank you so much. I appreciate that with you. It's so awesome. I I I think all the group are my friends and the artists. Uh, you are one of the. I think one of this is my my friend. With so with you is so awesome and amazing. <laughs> Thank you, man. No, I, I greatly appreciate that. <laughs> I, I, I have a dream list for talk with artists and you, you are part for, for this list and I check this for me my, for my list and talk with Todd and all the artists and I see this like drawing and you draw so amazing. This Gunslinger looks so badass. You're, you're too kind, brother. I really appreciate that. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad I've helped to inspire you in some way. You know, that's that's really cool. I, I really, really, really appreciate that. Ooh, now are, are, are you working on this? What is this? Ooh. Oh, this is how we, this is how the, this is how the cake gets baked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to have to go fast here. I have a, I have a, a little reference up here in front of me. Uh, from actually from one of my colorists because I need to <laughs> look how, how he does it. <laughs> okay, because I got a couple of colors here that are going to work out in my favor, but I just got to make sure I'm putting them in right. Okay, so it's so interesting to watch because every artist has a either different software or different, just like oh, different yeah, every, everybody's different, man. Everybody's yeah, different. you could see a little color palette up in the top left. Yeah, I actually am so happy I pre-prepared that from this image. Wow. I'm so happy I pre-prepared it because if I didn't, I'd be kind of screwed right now. <laughs> Racing against the clock before this main card? I mean, yeah, right? I mean, it starts, at, it, starts at, it starts at nine here, you know? So, I mean, I don't mind if I miss the first fight. You know, that's okay. Yeah, but no. Once, I... I'm, once I'm nicely tucked in for the, uh, <laughs> for the main card or for the, uh, the co-main and the main event, yeah, no, absolutely. Don't want to miss tonight's card. Fuck oh, no, dude. <laughs> um, okay, so this one is there. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you guys would like to know? Is there anything I can enlighten or help with? Is anybody oh, having? Yeah. Anyone have thoughts? Thoughts. <laughs> Anyone want pieces of life advice? It seems like Kevin's got some good good advice. I have a question it's about like shading. Uh, like, uh, like you said, if you go the light source from top left of the page, mm -hmm. how much liberty do you take with like the realism of shading? Because technically, like the the hat or the brim would cover his entire face in shadow. Yeah, that's so a how question. How do you balance that? That's a very interesting accent. Where are you from, dude? I'm from the Netherlands. I had a feeling that I, I thought I heard a European accent. Yeah, yeah, it's a... Uh... I was only just in... I was actually just in Holland. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, I was in Amsterdam for four days, uh, a few days ago. Um, 
So that's a question I think every single artist asks themselves about 400 times a week is how much liberty or how much freedom do I really have with the shading? And I guess the best answer I can give you is it's, it's all down to what you've practiced and have gotten comfortable with and can kind of control the result of. So if, like, yes, the brim of the hat will block out the light almost everywhere. That's true. But Mark Silvestri is one of the smartest and most impressive artists in the world. And he has been a proponent of once everything is to a serviceable point of looking good, it's now down to what looks cool. So it comes down to really, um, it comes down to really what looks cool in the moment and what can you make look the best possible. So while I know, yeah, you're dead right that, that the, that hat is going to cast a shadow all down through here, right? But there are ways that you can emphasize certain features and certain things that will make it look cool. Now, if you feel that ultra realism is your thing and that works best for you, then fine, that's, that's your thing. That, that's what works. But if you're like me, if you're a bit more stylized and you prefer things to have a bit more of a bounce to them, then you should just take some time to play with the shapes that you naturally draw. So like, I mean, my thing is I have very rounded shapes, you know, my, my musculature is, is very curvy and very rounded, you know, you see all these lines. So my thing is now, how does my shading emphasize that? And I'm going to show you now shortly, once I get like, once I get the, the, I call this the shitty bit, the flats, once I get the shitty bit done, I'll start to add in some shades. Hopefully this doesn't, yeah, there we go. Um, hopefully it'll enlighten you a bit more because your shading style is actually connected to your lining. You know, it's all, if you were like, you know, what you would perceive as a draw, an artist's drawing style, like, you know, Todd McFarlane or Greg Capullo or any of the real big guys that have made a, a smash with their art styles, it's because not just their lines, but everything is working together to create that style it's not one thing it's like five or six things working together in unison does that make sense so like your lines and your shading should work to complement each other that's when you then start to know what works and what feels most natural for you um because i've struggled with it for years you know until i arrived at what works best for me i mean i don't I don't think like a traditional inker at all. Like, I mean, my, my black and white work, hang on, let me pull up one sec. So if I pull this one up, like I don't cross hatch like other artists. I don't fade like other artists. I use brushwork, you know? And like, this is a, a cover from a long while back but you can see like i'm not using the same cross hatching that Silvestri would use i'm not using the same intense detail that todd would use or like uh, greg and jonathan glapian you know they would do hyper detailed hyper clean inks uh with massive amounts of gritty texture you know mine is kind of an amalgamation of all of those things but i like things to be a bit more sketchy and kinetic so um you know, I, I did struggle with that for quite some time as to, you know, how much shading is the right amount of shading. You know what I mean? But it's something that you just kind of get used to the more you do it. I hope that answers your question. I hope I didn't just spend the last five minutes babbling. I mean, it definitely does. It's okay, for good. me, a lot of the times I, I find myself like over rendering it because then yeah. I, I flip flop. I like stylistic drawing more. Yeah. But then I'm still in the process of like developing it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, okay. I, I flip flop between knowing how light would work, but then to, to merging not that. Over. Yeah, merging that with like the style I'm going for. Yes, is always where I I kind of still have to figure it out. But sure, and that's okay. I mean, like that that can be some that like look at that as a more fun thing than a than a struggle. That's one of oh the yeah no I do. I do enjoy it. It's like I I Good. like figuring it out and, and also developing it as my own so that it doesn't necessarily sure. follow anyone else's rules, but it just good. follows my own. Good, good. But it's That's always very, nice very to good. hear everyone's like 
own view on it so you can like merge mid mix and match yeah and and you know you like we wear our influences on our sleeves you know all of us every artist who draws wears their influence on their sleeve you know we we all look at a certain artist or a certain creator as oh man i wish i could draw as good as that guy in reality no one can because no one can draw like anybody you know you can you can try to replicate it all you want but at the end of the day you're only just an imitation then by trying to make it your own you're on way better ground and you're you're actually doing the right thing so you're you, you sound like you're on the right track for sure dude cheers well, thanks for the, attitude. Uh, for the input rock and roll man anytime we're getting there we're getting there wow the little fiddle nice. button it's amazing what a little bit of color can do right yeah Like I say, if I don't get this completely finished, I spend about seventeen hours tomorrow. <laughs> we'll, we'll 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 get the beginning parts, and then you'll post up a picture. It's just gonna look completely different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I threw it all out. Forget I said anything. <laughs> but, yeah, will, what, one thing, one thing, <laughs> one thing I will say though is, I I know I'm going fast, but I'm also I'm being very controlled. You know, I'm not. I'm not rushing anything either um, because, you know, going fast is just a product of the work I do. But at the end of the day, um, I do want it to look good too, you know, so I don't want to screw anybody over for thinking that. <laughs> well, it'd know. probably take, a, take me the whole day to cook something up like this and you did it in just over an hour, so. Really? Oh, sweet. I'm, I'm in great time. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to go with a kind of a yeah, it might work. What's everyone's uh, thoughts of the piece so far? Oh, they've all left. <laughs> <laughs> nope, no one's got opinions. All right. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just sitting there in silence because it's false. They have nothing to say. I kind of wish I, I actually drew this before getting on here so I could just spend the time coloring it and just chatting because that would have been way more fun. But the drawing of it is as informative as any, I guess. So it's all right. This is, maybe this is just the first time, you know, we'll have you back on for for another one in the future where uh Yeah, that'd be sweet. Experience talking in I, color. I mean, I, I've seen Todd do this a couple of times where he's been, he's drawn a character and he just started coloring it out of the nowhere and all of a sudden, 10 minutes later, you've got a masterwork. So. How, uh, I, most artists usually aren't really conversing when they're doing their art. How difficult is it for you to kind of focus not, on the and not, not, not hard at all. Not hard at all. It's fine. Um, I spent, I spent my early years as a kid on stage performing and doing stuff, so... I have no problem with mm. that. My mother used to write theater. And I played in heavy metal bands from the age of 13. So I don't feel those kinds of jitters or anything like that. I just kind of go. Used to the spotlight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, not so much. But uh, just used to being in that kind of environment, you know, where yeah. I have to kind of just adapt. Man, the white comments. Hey, Kevin. Uh, I, I'm posting everybody's, or I'm posting all your social media for everybody. Oh, I have your Instagram and your Twitter, and then I have uh, Jeff Mart, where they can go get prints. Is there anything anywhere else that you're at where we're missing? No, I think that's good. I think you got it. They're they're okay. my they're the places where I'm most active. Okay. Um, so I appreciate that. Thank you. It's very kind of you. See, this is the thing about Gunslinger that makes him more difficult is there's a lot more minor detail. You know, with Spawn, there's a lot of detail, but with the Gunslinger, there's a lot of really small details, like the mm -hmm. straps on his, on his, on his, you know, his gun belt. And I deliberately drew him in this pose so I wouldn't have to draw the bullet belt. <laughs> Because that bullet belt, it takes a it takes a minute, you know. It's a it's a tough 
it's a tough thing. It, like the, the belt of chains on spawn is way easier than drawing the bullet belts on, on the slinger. Oh, yeah, once you just get down to that minute detail. Oh, it's, 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 it gets hard. <laughs> it gets tricky. But it's fun. It's good fun. I'm looking, I'm actually looking at spawn 18 to just look at how Marcello colored spawn for me and doing my level best not to, not to embarrass myself because he's so good. Like he's one of the best colors I've ever worked with. So I would feel like I'd be doing him a disservice if I wasn't living up to his standard. Do you have more fun with the coloring process or the, uh, the, the penciling process? I think, I think right now I'm enjoying coloring more just purely because it's new. I haven't done it in, in, in a long, long time. I mean, I haven't, I only recently, re recently started coloring my own work, um, more as just an experiment than anything. Um, but I'm actually thoroughly enjoying it. I didn't realize how much I'd enjoy it. So over time, I'm going to start gradually moving my art over to this more colorful style, I think, because it's more exciting. I mean, my black and white stuff will always be what it is. You know, I love it and I love working in it. Um, but I find, you know, after a certain point, you just kind of want something new. Yeah. Black and white, could, I could see that getting old. Color kind of brings it to life. Exactly. I mean, no, black and white has its magic too. I mean, yeah. I spent years developing a, a solid black and white style and I'm very proud of it. But like all artists, we crave something new too. You yeah. know, we crave a new challenge. You know, we're kind of cursed that way. So, um, it's like, oh, I've mastered that, or I've at least I've gotten that to a point where I'm I'm happy with it. Right now, it's time to completely throw it all out. It's like, you know, <laughs> do you know what it is? It's like a comedian. It's actually quite like a comedian. Once you've gotten your set to a certain point, you throw it all out and start again. You know, keeps it interesting, keeps you engaged, though. That's for sure. Well, that's it. You know, that's it. Um, so I have a question, actually. How did all of you guys get involved with Oddkey, or were you just all? part of discord and were you part of a different community or or what i'm just curious uh are you talking in reference to just the community members or are you talking about the team like yeah how did this all come together like how did you guys all meet each other and uh, we all met through discord man it's uh it started out with todd announcing his odd key project okay we all, we all i don't there's some new faces i don't know how many people in here were there day one but Right. Quite a few of us currently here uh, were, were there, you know, day one. And okay. it's just, you know, progressed and evolved over time. Uh, a few of us wanted to start, I think, yeah, we wanted to, just, the original idea was for Oddkey to be kind of a platform for artists and creators. So we started this weekly right. show to highlight artists and creators. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and like, are you guys artists too? I mean, I've not, I've, I've, I guess I've rudely not asked that question. I mean, do a lot of you guys draw or do you, a lot of guys do art or music or whatever in your own way? Um, I mean, if you consider video editing art, yeah. Uh, me personally, hey, no, but I know hey, there's a few uh, community members that all dabble in the, you just, you were talking to Raul earlier. He's heavily involved in trying to become a comic artist. And yeah. other people definitely are dabbling with art, always trying to pick up tips from artists and stuff like that. So we definitely have a lot of artists in the community. Uh, okay. Not everyone. Some of us are just, you know, appreciators. But sure. it's all hey, community that kind of likes that's, uh, that's art. That's cool too, man. Yeah, that's cool too. Yeah. Um, no, it's awesome because you see, like, I, I guess I spend so much time in isolation. It's It's hard for me to... Hard for me to kind of grasp people making connections online like this, you know, this is yeah. quite, uh, quite new to me. I mean, I, I literally just spend all my days drawing. <laughs> well, hop, hop in one of these chats and just stream it while you're drawing. And I'm sure you'd get some, get some people hopping in saying what's up. You know, I might just do that. Actually, I think that might be good for me because again, I do, ca I do get a lot of tunnel vision a lot of the time. I just work myself into the ground. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, all right. I want to kind of, uh, Bronies over. Yeah, we got a community of uh, enthusiasts chomping at the bit, so don't be shy. Yeah, 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 for sure. I think it would be good, yeah, because I love, I actually love talking about all this stuff. Like, I love talking about video games and movies. And, oh, who and does? I love talking nerd shit in here. Yeah. See, where I come from is actually, you know, it's quite small. There's not an awful lot of people here into the same stuff. And if they are into the same stuff, it usually sucks, so... <laughs> 
It's usually really fucking boring stuff. It's not the good stuff that you're into. Not the good stuff. What about yeah. what's uh you, any movies on the horizon you're particularly excited for? I know with this John pretty- Wick. Here. John Wick. John Wick Four, dude. I. They've been hyping up a lot. They've said that they're claiming that John Wick Four is supposed to be like one of the greatest action movies of all time. So that we'll that, that that Japanese dude who played Scorpion in the Mortal Kombat movie that came out not so long ago, he's apparently going to be in it. And I'm like, anything oh. that dude. Wow. That that dude's that dude's fucking awesome. Yeah. He's one of the coolest. Like, I don't aspire to be anybody, but if I was, it'd be that guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> curious what more they're gonna do i mean we've seen john wick kill in the most creative ways oh dude there's have you heard of the movie franchise saw <laughs> yeah there's always new ways to kill people it's true um no i i just i adore um i adore that franchise i adore john wick um so i i'm very excited now for that movie i think it's going to be epic i i heard today that I, they're going to be doing a live uh, series for the Berserker. Um, they're going to be ending up the comic book is getting, I think it's on its last issue. And then they're going to be pivoting to maybe doing the live action. Of Berserker. Are you talking about like Berserk, like the, the, uh, the manga? Yeah. Yeah. The comic book. No way. Yeah. <laughs> like you're, 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 uh, you're talking soft to me now because Berserk is, one of my favorite things of all time. Yeah. Um, is the final issue getting ready to come come this mm, month? Or not? N- no, no. They're a while off the uh, finale yet. They're after start. I think. I think we're at the point where they're about to start the last arc. Okay. But like that could be like I mean I'll see you here in 2050 when that's done. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, I thought you know, the attack it's, it's on Japanese. Going to happen, and then they. <laughs> it's another part. Yeah, like the Japanese, like they they fucking take their time, like they're in no <laughs> rush. Like, and the thing is, the thing is, it's all really good stuff too. You know, it's it's actually fucking annoying because it's like yeah, hurry up, like they justify their time taking. You're like, all right, I can't I can't hate you for it. You you made something great. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, if there's there's one thing these I ah, fuck this up. Come on, God damn it. Um, give me back my spikes, you bitches. There we go. Um, I used the wrong tone. I used the skull's tone for the gun. Anyway, uh, yeah, like, I mean, shit, I grew up watching Dragon Ball and all that stuff as a kid. And I'm like, fucking six episodes for one fight scene? What are we doing? You know? <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? But then, you know, the climax happens and you're like, oh, shit, it was totally worth it. All right, fuck yeah. it. You know? Uh, no, yeah, they, they had a master mastery at dragging it out. Really, well, I mean, it's it's part of their culture, you know. It's part of their culture. They they like to settle into their stories and really explain the living shit out of something. You know, that's that's what they do, mm-hmm. um, and it works really well because I mean, I mean, there's only a handful of American and European comic books can actually compete with Japanese comic books because they're so developed. You know, I mean, most comic books that you'll see coming out of Japan have been 15 years in the making before they're ever even published. So, you know, the uh, the, the Western world, we, we kind of lack in that regard. No, that said, we, we get to the fucking point a lot quicker, too. So, you know, there's definitely pros and cons on both sides. Yeah. Man, well, this piece is really coming together. Yeah, it's going to look really cool when it's done. I'm trying to get, I want to get as much of it done as I can now so you guys can enjoy it while we're here. I mean, you've gotten to see the drawing of it, so by the time it's all done, it's going to look really, really tasty. Ooh. Mm-hmm. But again, like I say, if I, will I, so if I finish this guy off tomorrow fully, will I just post it in the Artist Alley or where will I post it? Yeah, post it in the Artist Alley um, and then I'll see it and ping everyone so they can see it. Okay, that's, that's cool. That's no problem. Perfect. Because the actual rendering process takes quite a bit longer. It, it, like again, I want to give a good example for anybody who like you know like I don't know the name of the last question that came in from our friend in in Holland. In Holland but um, I, I'd like to show you just a good example of shading and 
put into action just so you can have a tangible reference, you know, done in front of you. Hey, Kevin, you did some uh, panel work or if I remember correctly on Gunslinger six or seven. Uh, number one. Number, number one. one. Uh, do you, do you have any other in, you know, panel work on comic books coming up or, or, or are you, you just got more covers to look forward to? I'm, current, I'm currently working on, I have, I have a creator owned book that is currently being colored that we're looking to try and pitch to image. Um, which is, more wild western goodness um and i'm working on a story right now which is irish mythology um which is all going to be interior drawn by me so um i'll be sure to let you guys know um when it's done you can check it out because the irish mythology one is actually quite cool it's a different it's very different to what you'd expect like a lot of irish mythology is very old very very old um in terms of you know, it's historical referencing. Um, like Irish myth, Irish mythology dates back to like the the fourth century. You know, so it goes back quite far, and then you get um, and then you get like you know European mythology and stuff like that, like like Norse and Scandinavian mythology. They'd all be a little bit earlier as well. They'd be around that same time. So guy i'm working with is uh is doing a really really cool job on a on a particular story so i'd be interested to see what what you guys would think of that it's very different it's very different but it's it's really cool um and then the creator own story that i'm doing um that we're hoping to get pitched to image later this year is like uh, it's a it's a cowboy lovecraftian horror story so all sorts of coolness. And then as for covers, I've got, I've got another Spawn cover coming out in May. I, as far as I know, that's as far out as the solicits have been for now. So keep an eye out for June. I might have another cover in June. Um, I might have another cover in July. I, I, I don't know how, how they release things. I'm not involved in that side of things. Um, I, I get as excited as you guys when I see, oh, I have a new cover. Woo! You know? <laughs> oh, it's been released. Yeah, exactly. Like, ah, <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> Um, okay, so no. No, forget it. Remove it from your brain. You never saw that. What were we talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? If well, I, I can say, that... you can, you, if you ever want to attack that Jason Wynn in front of a, a window. Right, right. I mean, <laughs> you, you need to, you know, especially like maybe with a rainy background or something. I mean, that would be, that'd be sick. Did I just hear some blaster fire going on? In your I was going to say, who's playing Goldeneye? <laughs> no, that's my pew pew. I got a, I got a uh, text message from the wife, so that's that's one of my notifications. That's your notification sound. That's that, 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 but that's like the that's the pistol sound from the James Bond video game, Zeus. Oh uh, yeah, Goldeneye 007. That was an OG. I a, a prior line of work before I got into the comic book world. <laughs> right. <laughs> pew pew. This is awesome. Hey, well, hey, I know we're getting ready to wind down here. Thank you so much, Kevin, um, for showing up and and uh, participating in this live event and interacting with our community. It's been a fantastic Saturday afternoon. Um, thank you, everybody in the audience for showing up. I see a lot of OGs out there. Palm, Rick, um, Okagi. I see Jake. Hill. Okage. I, Hokage. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. pure venom. So um, glad to see everybody here. So again, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate your time. My pleasure. Do it anytime. Back again, um, hopefully in the future. And, Absolutely, uh, I'd be. Lo I'd love to come back. I actually really, really enjoy chatting with you guys. Yeah, man, you, you're pretty. Uh, you know, just to be candid with you, you're pretty cool guy man you're just a, a regular guy just like us so it's uh yep. it's really kind of um humbling to interact with you and it's been a it's been a fantastic saturday afternoon i'm really glad to hear that man i i genuinely am i, I love i look all i do is draw pictures but if my drawings and my pictures can bring people some some joy or some happiness then that's what fucking matters man like obviously you know it's my job i like to get paid who doesn't but at the same time, if I can bring a little bit of 
joy and happiness to somebody's day, then I've, I've done my job. Because I know, I know what this stuff did for me when I was a kid, or even to this day, you know, I, I know what it gives me when it comes to happiness. So I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, man, because I mean, I, I've had some interaction with, with, with um, some of the artists that I've looked up to and, you know, you're, you, you see what they draw on paper and you're like, like what you said, it brings you joy and, and happiness. But then when you re you actually meet the artists in real life or talk to them, you're like, wow, what, what a fucking asshole that guy was. <laughs> so that's not, that's yeah, it not, happens. You, you know, with you, it's like, wow, that guy is not only just a, phenomenal artist but he's really just a, a cool dude so it's been well, cool. i appreciate that that's very kind of you man i mean at the end of the day i'm just a dude who draws pictures that's right <laughs> that's right um so now what, what i'm doing is i'm laying in some shading um so this is where the fun starts mm. and right as i'm about to stop <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah um, i mean i know you want to get back with the main card so go ahead and tell us when you want to wrap Whenever. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it in a sec, but I just want to kind of give you guys a good look at, you know, how I like to approach things. Mm. Oh, wow. What, dude, that's so cool. See, already adding in those little shades just adds the attitude, right? Yeah, it changes so much. You know, so like that's the, that's the, the power of shading. Um, so... Are we going from above or we go from behind? Yeah, we go from the side. Yeah. I, sorry, I, can I say one thing more? Yeah, man. Um, Kevin, I have one, one gift for you. Maybe you. when I finish the gift, I send you for in Instagram. Yeah, man, absolutely. Oh, that's very kind of you. Okay, uh, thank you so much. I... He doesn't talk with you. I it's time to me for go. And my internet is so bad, and no problem. I try to steal a lot of time, and he's awesome to talk with you again. And this draw is so awesome. Thank you, dude. Thank you. I look forward to hearing from you on Instagram. All right. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, goodbye, everyone. Uh, see tomorrow. you tomorrow or other day. Thanks, Raw. Yeah, the shading just had the whole makes it makes it so much crazier. The yeah. subtle details that really pop. And you can really have fun with it too, because if you learn how to use colors properly, you can really add some character to things like i say i like animated styles so i like to make it feel you know alive and explosive if possible not boring and flat which i find a lot of comic books can be um they kind of lean into the process too much and they think that i'm not saying this about any one particular colorist or anything like that it's just there's times where i look at certain comic books and i'm like this person has learned how other people do it and is not doing it how they would do it you know they're they're replicating another artist's rendition or approach to things and in reality you would be better off doing it your way because you know you never know your your version might be cooler and better than another guy's version you know you just don't know so you have to kind of just trust you that's why i say confidence is king you have to just kind of trust yourself you know, I'm after screwing up a little bit here, but that's okay. Easily fixed. Just delete all that. My mistake is simple. I like my gunslinger. I like my spawn to have a certain shape. Now, Kevin, whenever I was in college, I had to write a research paper one time that was about 20 pages long. Yeah. And I was running up to a deadline. I was finishing up, and I accidentally erased it. <laughs> Have you ever done a snafu? Well, I call a snafu uh, like that with this. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, I have. Yeah, it's fucking horror. Oh yeah. There, there's no horror movie would be scarier than that. Um, yeah, I have. Um, once ever, I was racing to get a, a. It was actually for a portfolio review, and I was racing to get the work submitted, and right as I was saving everything down. 
my internet crashed and the corrupt the the crash corrupted the upload and deleted everything don't ask me how it happened but for the next three days i was out of communication with everybody i was so fucking pissed off that i i just i couldn't i had to literally remove myself from the situation i had to recuse myself from the scenario you know yeah i bet ah oh, horror oh, horror yeah. yeah um yeah so you, you know it's uh, like there's a thing with every artist learning um at the beginning um called what we call the save button yeah and you, uh, I always say it's the mistake you make once where you get so involved in your drawing and you don't press the save button. See, I just pressed it now subconsciously now that I'm talking about it. Yeah. But I, um, I press the save button incrementally every maybe 10 minutes because you'll get, you know, five hours into a drawing and all of a sudden your computer or the app crashes and now you've lost it all. That happens to everybody at least once. And if it doesn't happen to you, then you're going to be in for one hell of a shock when it does. <laughs> well, there's shocks like that in the Web3 community. I remember, I, um, you know, in the Web3, you'll learn, and hopefully I'll discuss with you one day, if they're, yeah. uh, they're not your keys, they're not, you don't own it. You got it. always your keys, and you never give up your password, and then you never click on anything either. Um, whenever I was first... Into entering into this world a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. I clicked on a bad link, man, and it just it drains you. And so oh, you, learn, you learn those types of mistakes of well, I know not to ever do that again. I mean, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's things you just have to make the mistake first, really, don't you? Yep, yep, yeah. So, but you know, it's those lessons that are the, that hit the hardest, though, that make sure hey, you never replicate them. You know, Absolutely. So. I mean, I mean, look, it's like, um, it's like, um, you know, if you're going on a, on a, on a long drive and you get a flat and you didn't bring the jack, you know, <laughs> you make that mistake once. Yep. And, so, and it hurts. And it hurts. It hurts to make <laughs> a mistake. But, but that's life, right? I mean, we learn by making mistakes. No, the, 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 the man who never made a mistake never learned anything, you know, so. You know that's the that's the that's the main thing. But see, right? Even just one look away. Now I'm going to do what I call big shading. Now, right? I'm going to use the um, I'm going to use the back area here. Whoops, to show like how we do very confident back shading. Right. So it's all about knowing the muscles. And it's all about knowing where the back musculature goes. So I'm going to go very fast. Um, a lot of people don't learn the back. They learn the torso fine. They don't learn the back. Um, like in the gym, you don't skip leg day. In art, you don't skip back day. Because, yeah. you know, because um, if you don't learn how to draw the back, then your characters will look, they'll actually look weightless. Um, they won't look like they have any actual mass to them. You know, I mean, Frisky, you mentioned there, like you like how big and, you know, mean looking I get my musculature on the characters. The reason for that is, is that I'm not just drawing the shoulder, um, one second, I'm not just drawing, you know, the shoulder and then, you know, the tricep. What I'm actually drawing is, and, you know, Todd is a big proponent of this too, you're drawing underneath it too. So when I'm drawing the tricep, I'm mentally drawing the line through the shoulder that would then create the bicep and then the tricep and then the elbow, the radial muscle. But if I then delete this line, your brain makes the connection and all of a sudden you have a you know, a solid arm, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's why you learn the, all of the anatomy. You don't just learn the cool bits, you know, whoops. So if I show you now, so for where the light source would be, we're going to essentially darken all of this area. And again, I play around with it quite a bit just so I can see what's too much, what's too little. And it's the beauty of working digital is I can kind of make these quick changes on the flight. Wow. You see, it's already starting to add mass to his back. Yeah. And then we just make the shape a little bit more angular. And when I put it in the other side, it'll deepen it even more.
So when I zoom out, you still you start to see now that his back is starting to become like a three dimensional object, and it starts to tilt back into space. And I can start adjusting the elements that are kind of exa- or I guess exemplifying it and making it more stand out. Now, did you already pick? that your light source was going to kind of be up in the top right hand corner. I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. did you already know that before or it just kind of worked out that way? I'm currently what we're calling winging it. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm currently just winging it. I'm just kind of going with what feels natural. Um, and if I don't like it, I can change it. If I do like it, I won't change it. You know, that's kind of how I would approach things. I know a lot of other guys would be a little bit more procedural they might sure. approach things a little differently. That's, that's okay too. Again, it's just down to. I know I work my best when I'm when I'm winging it. Sometimes and I know I'm working my best when I have it planned out. So right now I'm feeling pretty good about winging it because I can kind of guarantee that it's not going to look crappy. I have enough experience working on on all slinger here that I know what will look good and what won't. Um, and like there's there's other things as well like you know I knew that the hat would definitely cast a shadow right I also know that down here under his jacket it's definitely going to cast a shadow so mm-hmm. I can just literally just draw a strip right down through here and that's already like my brain is making the indication that you know the underside of the coat even just there now I've created depth you know yeah. same, same again here and up any bits that are playing. see now all of a sudden he's starting to look three dimensional right And I tend to, like, like when I'm doing my lines, I tend to um, rework and readjust and course correct as I go. And, and I'll trim things away and I'll cut things away if I, if I don't like how they're sitting. Tell me something, you guys had Daniel Enriquez on. Um, he's uh, Portuguese, right? Yep. Yeah, uh, what was the time zone like for him? Was it, it was probably harsher than mine, I'd say, right? Uh, when we started, it was one in the morning for him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair, fair play to him. Yeah, he uh, he was actually talking about how he is used to it because him and a few other artists like to go the, the night owl route and just stay, oh, stay yeah, the night. night shift. Yeah, yeah, the night shift. Yeah. It's yeah, a lot of guys crazy. do it. I wish I could do it. I'm actually more of a night owl. Um, as it stands. I think it's a curse of comic book artists, to be honest with you. Um, but um, I know what's cool is if I put that on, you know, we create the sense of a background. Um, yeah. Um, I, I wish I could go back to the night shift. I think I'd be a little bit more productive, but my, my girlfriend is a school teacher. He gets mm. up quite early in the morning, so it just wouldn't work for our setup at home. Um, you know, because the real Gerald asks, is this going to be a cover? No, this is actually going to become a digital collectible. Uh, a one-on-one piece that'll be auctioned off to you guys. So, OCT auction. Not a cover, but it would be a cool cover. Yeah, Kevin, um, Todd is actually uh, bringing some of his doodles from his vault uh, to our community as well. Oh wow! So you're you're gonna be this and Mark Spears' uh, uh, live drawing events are gonna be our pretty much our last. Is it gonna be our last ones for for on these uh, series there, Rim? But yeah, we, as far as the live, we're gonna be doing rest for uh, Todd's doodles from now on, right? Oh, uh, live drawings will continue. Actually, um, Javier Fernandez is gonna be coming on for a live drawing at nice. the end of the month. So, no, live drawings will continue at, well, along with the uh, Todd's Doodles, for sure. They'll both go. That's awesome. Javier is amazing. He's a brilliant artist. Yeah, that should be a great one, too. But this was... I'm just looking at this gunslinger. It's just badass. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, man, that's pretty amazing. Word on the street is Denzel Washington is going to be... Uh, reuniting with Ridley Scott for Gladiator 2. What? But Denzel wasn't in Gladiator. I just want to He wasn't. I think he's might, they might be doing a Gladiator 2 with Denzel. 
Oh, okay. No, that'll be good. Gladiator too, but it's not with Denzel. It's gonna pick up. It's gonna pick up where Lucius uh, grows up and and takes takes over Rome. It's gonna. That's who it's gonna be about. Oh wow! Mm. If you're man, that, I'm a that, huge that, Gladiator that, fan. Sorry. That that movie is iconic. Like over yeah. here, like over here, there's dudes quote that. You know, fucking. Are you going to pretend? Ah, man, it's fucking <laughs> in your seat stuff. Like, it's just so good. Yeah, yeah. You know, was it father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife? Oh. Yeah, dude. Oh, you boys are in for it now. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I love, I love that movie. Maximus Release Cornelius. Great freaking movie. Did you, gotta... did you ever? Did you ever see the story that? Um, that he told, Russell Crowe told on the Howard Stern show about when him and Ridley Scott knew the movie was going to be a hit. No. It was, so the, 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 the film was shot um, relatively chronologically in terms of scenes. And the reason for that was because of the Richard Harris's declining health. Um, they had to kind of get his scenes done. And Russell Crowe was actually quite new at the point at the time. Like he was, he was known in the kind of smaller scene, but he wasn't very well known. Um, but Ridley Scott asked him. It was the scene right before the first battle, and it's the quiet, essentially the calm before the storm. But it's the part where he sees the little bird, and he kind of pauses for a second just to take it in, and the bird kind of gives him pause just before the war kicks off, and. It's the moment that he goes from looking at the bird, like the peacefulness of the bird, to general of a war. And he's about to brutally murder this entire crowd, you know? Um, right after that scene, Ridley Scott just leant in. He yelled cut. He just leant into Russell Crowe's ear. He goes, you and me are going to be fucking incredible, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that's, that's a special movie, man, so... Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it really is. That is one of those once every 10 year movies, you know. Like Seven. Yes. Rim. I gotta watch it. I gotta watch Seven. I gotta watch it. I already did my push ups. Uh, if, if, you, if you make a movie reference or say a movie and, you, and the other person doesn't know it, they gotta do push ups. That's the before, before I go, that's a cool rule, right? That's a good rule because not only are you getting punished for being out of the loop, but you're also getting healthy. So I like exactly. it. Um, but I'm going to leave you guys, right, with a, with a game that a buddy of mine and I play. We used to play it years ago, but it, every so often we, we play it just to, I get, it, it's, it's good brain training, right? We call it, very, we're very creative people, we call it the movie game. But it starts with, I say, Brad Pitt. Okay? Momentum. And, <laughs> right? So I would say, Brad Pitt, and then you would say Brad Pitt and um, Jonah Hill in Moneyball. Ooh. And then the next person says Jonah Hill and Michael Cera in Superbad, Ooh. and so on. So you have to take that actor and add an actor in the movie. But if you get the movie wrong, or if you get the actor wrong, you take a strike. Okay. And if you take a strike, then you and your friends mercilessly rag on that person until they learn their lesson. <laughs> I like this game. Right? So that's something you can play. And it can go for hours. Like, we used to play it for hours to the point where we would deliberately be catching each other out. Like, I mean, I remember it got to the point where I was saying, like, oh, I'm trying to think now, like, really obscure actors just, just so I could screw with him. And just... I'm trying to think, like, who'd be a good example? We should we should create a channel in our chat. We should have it the Kevin Keen movie character movie game, and everybody can come in there and play this game for him. Yeah, but you got to play it without Google, and you got to play it fairly. You know, yeah, it's hard to, hard to regulate a chat where everyone has access to the internet. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like I remember we used to catch each other out all the time with Goodfellas. We used to always catch each other out with Goodfellas. Because I would always say Joe Pesci and Ray Liotta. But once ever he said Robert De Niro, I was like, hold the fuck on. <laughs> hold the fuck on. He wasn't in that movie. And then we'd, we'd get into a massive... I mean, we've, we've tested our friendship on a number of occasions. Because <laughs> of it. No, I feel that. Sometimes those movie debates get heated. 
They do, yeah, they do. They're no joke, yeah. They're they're no joke, but you gotta you you take it seriously because without movies, what do we got? You know. Um. So I, I think I'm pretty much there now with the amount of time that I have right now, guys. But this all is right, your, Kevin, your, 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 too long. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Hey guys, I appreciate you hanging on too. I mean, Jesus, you guys were here at seven your time, <laughs> or seven my time. What I'm saying, um. And, you know, you've hung out and you've chatted and I, I really do appreciate it. You know, I, I, I love having the chats. I love talking to you guys. I love that you guys enjoy it. You know, that's a big thing for me. Um, and yeah, this is kind of the basic idea of what it was going to be, you know. And it comes to shade down his pants a little bit and whatnot. You're going to get a better idea of where I was going to go with it and how cool it would look. But um, one last thing I'm going to do before I go is show you guys because... I'll probably spend tomorrow now finishing this guy off. Um, and I, sorry, I might as well ask you, is it cool if I share this on my Instagram and stuff too? Yeah, I mean, it's your piece. It's your yeah, piece. no, I, I, I'm just I making just, sure, uh, you know, in case. Just, I, I would just ask, because I know the whoever gets this digital collectible would like uh, a nice signature on it somewhere. Oh, absolutely. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Sure. Yeah, um, don't worry. But what I'm going to do, right, is I'll just show you a, a really cool... Effect that I'm going to put on it. Uh, take orange because I think R, or take really cool blue because we want to get that moonlight kind of idea going on. Like your recent cover? Yeah, yeah. I love drawing. Well, you see, he's a night character, so um, you always want to try and give him that kind of ominous feel, you know? So, you keep saying you're with a time limit and then you, and then you get inspired. Hey, man. <laughs> like I'm an artist <laughs> shit I, I, I'm a kind of a slave to this shit you know um, Ooh. so this is kind of advanced highlighting it's not really what I would do right now at this point in the drawing but I'm just giving you guys an idea of what I would like to do with it as I go forward with it So when I zoom out, you kind of get the idea that there's a light source. Now, that's not bright enough. Oh, yeah. No, I see it, though. That's cool. And I'm probably going to change that, actually. So that, that blue actually kind of sucks. So go orange, maybe. Nope, that's not what I want to do. <laughs> nope. You see what I mean? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, if I was to expand that more, put like a... Oh. See what I mean? Oh, wow. Wow, dude. And then on the other side, where it's kind of more dark, you can kind of make it look kind of more like a movie, like John Wick. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? So Ooh. that's a kind of a, that's a little taster of where we're going, okay? That's awesome. And that's me just kind of Gonna give you guys a little bit more to go with. So, well, thank you again, Kevin. This was amazing, and I I know we're all super excited to see whatever the final piece looks like uh, whenever you get that done. But thank you so much for everyone for attending today's cafe. I know it was a unusual time, but again, thank you for being here, Kevin. And uh, I hope you have a great weekend. And enjoy the fights. And you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy the fights. And not being a smiley face. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. If you, I would appreciate, like, I know I showed you guys a little sneak peek. Just be sure to delete that out if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely that edit that out. No worries. I really I'll appreciate sure that. Right uh, thank you. That was that was just for us. That was just for the people who, yeah, who came absolutely. here. Um, but yeah, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed chatting with you all. Thank you all for your support and for your continued compliments and and kind words. It really genuinely means the world to me. And uh, I hope I can come back and, and draw for you guys again very soon.